All righty then, cleaning up my windows and we're going live. It's Marco and Gary time. This is a bad song. I'm going to stop singing now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a lot of, it's been a slew of, it's been a slew of, um, oh yeah. Don't you love that? Uh, um, I, I'd say about four times a year. Well, obviously I watch myself when I edit myself, but I'd say about four times a year, I will watch almost a full one of our videos kind of as a gut check, you know, like, Hey, uh, actually I, I, <laughs> yeah. Can I be doing something better? Um, yeah. Hey chat. How y'all doing? Um, yeah, I just recently watched, I watched our, uh, the whole damn, I, back through the, the, the two hour Jesse podcast that we put up on Friday. Cause that's a whole new style of video we've never done before. So I watched that whole damn thing after it went live. Um, just to, oh, they, they can't hear you. Oh, that's interesting. Let me, uh, let me, let me see why, let me see why, why can't you hear Marco? I bet I know why you can't hear Marco. Marco, try saying something. Hello chat. There it is. We fixed it. You're a little louder than me. I can fix that too though. Uh, give me a test test one two test test one two. One two test one two. Test. Jesus, that is, on, it's not your fault because every everything's great as in terms of my recording, but Streamlabs is like, yeah, that uh, anything coming through Discord right now, it's loud as hell. It's so loud. It's gonna be the loudest thing you've ever heard in your life. All right, uh, uh say something else. Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Good grinding gear. Good grinding gear to you. I th I think we've got it. All right, we're both we're both in the yellow pocket now. Uh, yellow, yellow, yellow there. <laughs> yellow there. The angels yellow. Are my nightmare. Um. Yeah. <sighs> we should. What if we didn't say anything and we just sat here in silence for two hours? Do you think did people you, would stay? Did you Did you stay? see our our stream trailer for our Endwalker finale? No. no. Okay. Okay. We very rarely do stream trailers because they're a lot of work for a gag that literally is never visible again once the stream goes live. Oh. But uh -huh. we figured it's the finale. We should do something. Um. And so yeah. at the end of our Endwalker stream. Um, we we aired something that that I edited together that was kind of like a montage of everything we've done since A Realm Reborn through Endwalker, um, kind of as a thank you to everybody. And then we had an actual yeah. thank you where, where earlier that week, Kyle and I had sat out by a, a fire pit in my backyard and we just had some whiskey and kind of talked. Oh, about... I did see the trailer. Wait, yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. We're, okay. Yes. So we, yeah, yeah, we sat we sat and stared at the camera for um, six minutes straight without saying a single thing, <laughs> and that was. <laughs> That was the trailer for our Red Walker finale. <laughs> Let me tell you, it um, that's hard. That's when you're sitting there with someone else. It's really hard not to just be like, like giggling. You go right back to thirteen year old like slumber parties, like just just giggling. You know, speaking of your N Walker uh, finale, I watched a good bit of it. I watched Final Day. And I was just so, I think I understood why people enjoy watching other people because I was like, man, this is just so cool. Like, like it's like something, it's, a, it's something to know, like you, I've known this, you know, like I, I experienced it and to have you, I remember, I remember um, when you guys got to Zitos, it was just like, yeah, that's that good shit. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, this is awesome. I didn't watch all of it, but, but I certainly like just, I, it's, it's really fascinating how, how moving a communal experience of watching, especially you guys, cause you've been doing it for, you know, a year and like just the amount of time and the like singular content you, you about can say, it. You can say, because you guys took so damn long. You can say it. It's okay. No, <laughs> I think it's, no, you took exactly the right amount of time. I mean, I think that that's why you have such a good community because that community is like with you. You've like, they've like tasted it. They've like, you've nourished them with, with Final Fantasy content. I mean, it's actually was expertly done. I don't even think I could do that. Oh, I just, thanks, man. Here's a, yeah, dude. I mean, like, like I just push record, which you should never do. Never push record. You, you got to at least have a plan. You got to have a skeleton at least. And, you know, you guys just, just name it. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> Marco has discovered emotional vampirism. That's right. Yeah, I um, <laughs> right. 
I, I think I, I started to get it when I knew Amanda was coming on. Um, mm. and I knew she had just started Realm Reborn. I'm like, oh, shit, I kind of want to watch this. So I'm, that was like the first thing. But then while I was editing um, the MSQ&A with Jesse last week, there's a, there's a portion in our, our talk with him where he talks about uh, the Xenos fight and uh-huh. um, what it's like to see it with a, with a Lollafell in the cutscene. <laughs> um, and so in the edit, if you go and watch the edited version that just dropped on Friday, I edited in his view of the Xenos <laughs> fight directly from his stream. So I went into his archives and I found it. Um, and so it, it hard cuts, he brings it up in, in, in the edit, it hard cuts to his actual live reaction to it. And, um, <laughs> I lost so much time in the edit going and getting that because I ended up just kind of sitting there watching like a good 20 minutes of Jesse's and Walker finale. I'm like, this is great. <laughs> like, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I'm with you. I'm starting, I'm starting yeah. to get it. I'm starting to get it. It, it's really unique. Um, because like you can't, it's because the game and because most studios that aren't nintendo like fucking love it when people stream their games um it's like a loophole because you can't do it with a movie i can't put i can't screen capture a movie and watch it for the first time and 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 let people enjoy the the reaction i mean there's roundabout ways you can do it but there's something with a game where it's like well i can just show the game and i can put my mug on camera and and bob's your uncle you've got a, a communal experience and yeah, it's, 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 I don't know. I was talking to, I was talking to a student. I do some advising with a college. I was talking to a student who was, um, where was it? Where the hell was I going with this? <laughs> they, they wanted to start streaming and you said, don't ever do it. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, they already have a channel and they've already had a few things go viral, but they were like, why are my other things Damn. going viral? Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's a couple of their videos of way more views than I'll ever, I'll ever see. But now they were they were asking about like consistency. I was like, I well, that I can help you with. And I looked at their consistency. Channel. Yeah. I was like, your stuff is all over the place. So you haven't trained your audience. Your audience doesn't know what to expect from you, or or you did train them and then you moved away from it. And now like they're not watching you because it's not what they subscribed to you for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I had that I had that discussion with them. So, um, but that you know, but that's that's a, did we start the podcast officially? Or no, we, or no, we, no. We can. You well, wanted, you want, shall we go into it? Shall we go? Shall I was we? just about to free ball. It. All right, all right. Hard. Well, yeah, well yeah. let yeah. me play the music, and then we can then we can start in earnest. How's that? How's that sound? That sounds good. <laughs> hey, chat. What's up? Oh yeah, how we do in chat? I should. Oh, actually, you know what I should do first? Because again, Kyle usually is running things in the background. I should probably tweet that we're live. That sounds. You got a tweet. You know, if if I'm gonna sit here and tell you that I give people advice on how to make things, I should I should probably <laughs> be at least attempting social media. <laughs> um, Where'd I go? Oh, I, uh, you went black on Discord. Uh oh. Is that did on my camera? Oh, you know what? I bet you my camera just took a poop. Yeah, it did. Hold on. Bear with us, folks. <laughs> they have, it, this happens. I don't know why. Speaking of um, talking about, we totally know what's going on while we do things that are maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know why this happens every once in a while. Like my, it's not, my battery's not even hot. It's just like. <laughs> so jammed. Good thing you didn't start yet. <clears throat> All right, I should. Uh, there I am. There you be. That won't be the last time. <laughs> Sometimes it overheats. I don't know. It's just a thing that happens with me. I don't. After the show, um, if you're more, if you're at all interested, I'd love to talk to you about what camera you're using because I, I troubleshooted the shit out of my camera to make it stop overheating. So I might, <laughs> I might be able to help you. Maybe. I mean, it, it, it's random. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, uh, I'm tweeting. It's podcast o'clock. That's my wonderful. Mm. Everyone's gonna click on it. Tweet. There we go. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna put up this screen and the Grinding Gear Podcast episode 80 with Marco. Returning Marco. Uh, it goes uh, records live. It's already live, but it records live in three, two, one.
It's time to grind through this week. It's the Grinding Gear Podcast. I'm Garrett, here today with Marco, who is returning to the show. Or as you know from YouTube and Twitch, Marco Meatball. It's me! (laughs) Thanks for joining me again, dude. I'm really excited to have you back. Oh, yeah, man. Of course. Thank you for asking me to come back. I am very excited to we, chat. We have talked a lot um, just as uh, people who now enjoy each other's company. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we could possibly be friends. I, maybe. We, I think we could use the F word. <laughs> I think we could use the F word to describe our relationship. Shockingly hard. Shockingly hard to make friends in the creator sphere. Um. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd say just post-college, it's hard to make friends. Um, oh god like what do you do you (laughs) need a a tinder just for friendship like that bumble has one i asked my fiance i said should i go on bumble not to date other people but to look up friends and she was like you have my permission and i was like i'm it's already out enough finding you i think i'm i think i'm just gonna lock it down with the with the one friend i have where i live (laughs) and call it a day friends yeah because it's fine that, it's that or you have to get into in-person hobbies like warhammer or magic the gathering <laughs> it's like your only your only other shot um, <laughs> yeah yeah just, just paint painting with a bunch of other 30 somethings yes yeah but i i did speaking of hobbies i i've i've really uh i've really uh tried to discover what life outside of video games is because when you make video games your job surprise you need some balance. And so I, I, I bought some, I bought some, uh, some gun, some Gundam model kits. And, uh, Ooh. I've been reading, I've been reading Shogun. I know you, you like that show. So I've been, I bought the book yesterday. Uh, and I've... Yeah. Probably the best TV show I've seen in like a decade. I can't I'm, wait to watch it. I'm trying. I'm it. really racking my brain trying to think like basically the most I've loved a TV show since Breaking Bad ended. Uh, Damn. Shogun is, um, impeccably made huh yeah i mean the book is really good i i love feudal japan japan anything um especially like uh there was a lot of discourse on on the internet about rise of the ronin and and how it compared to ghost of tsushima but like for me that's good eating uh that's good eating i love anything that involves feudal like J- japan really samurais all, all samurai not eyes but samurai anything like that i love it so it's, it's a fun read. And then after that, I got to read Musashi, which is the other. Have you read that? No, no. I also haven't read Shogun. I'm just watching the show. I am, I am not a, I'm not a well-read man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's come up before. I didn't start reading um, of my own volition um, until like my late 20s. Um, it was. Well, I mean, yeah, because you're forced to read all through high school. Yeah, I, I, I did not like reading growing up. Um, yeah, the, the force, the being forced to read part really kind of took all the all the fun out of it for me that's reasonable i was i was in a i was doing a tech for a show because i had to get credits for something and so i was doing sound design for like you know when the door opens in a play or something and you have uh-huh. to like push the, the, the noise. and so i waited to the last minute to read the great Gatsby, the great gatsby and i forced myself to read this was in the, in the dark with a flashlight while pushing cue for door and i'm just sitting there like trying to speed read yeah no i did did, did. yeah no i don't blame you i i learned the i learned a lesson i'm i I will let the audience and you decide if it was a good or a bad lesson but um uh the summer before my freshman year of high school that was the first time i'd ever been assigned summer reading and i was like (laughs) well this sucks um not looking forward to whatever this new high school thing is that i'm heading toward and we were assigned the old man in the sea and we and yep. and the hobbit we had to read those mm-hmm. two books and then like the first week of high school in in our english class it didn't matter like if you were like ap english or whatever every single kid uh, had to take two tests on those on those two books and i i read i actually read the old man and the sea because i looked at them both and i went old man and sea you're thin i can get through you i looked at the hobbit <laughs> and i love tolkien but that man took way too long to describe blades of grass i, I got really dude bilbo's out. birthday man i could care less yeah uh, yeah anyway. so i watched the rotoscoped animated version of the hobbit because that's all we had back then we didn't have the the new peter jackson mess uh, that is the uh, hobbit uh. films um i so so i want you so to be clear i actually read the old man in the sea i 
did not read and I watched The Hobbit, I got a like 98 on the Hobbit test and I failed the old man in the sea test. So that's when I learned reading <laughs> with reading books would get me in trouble. Yeah, I should just cheat and watch the the movie version of whatever book I'm assigned. That's <laughs> that's when I learned that lesson. Um, Listen, I think that that's fair. Some people are visual and other people are, 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 you know, what's hard is when you see, when you see a movie and you watch the movie and then I don't know about you, but like every time I do try to read a book that's based off of a movie, I just inevitably picture the characters. Oh, oh, no, no this is on no, my this, end. This, this is on oh, my okay. end this time, not yours. Uh, so sorry, everybody. Let's, um, let's just nuke this. And uh, well, it's just the day of um of of technical difficulties. Hello, stream. How are you? Y'all doing all right? I'm doing. Everything's just going so smooth. It's the eclipse. I blame the eclipse that I can't even see from uh, the state that I live in. Um. Oh, some. Oh yeah, something really broke. Let me see. I bet. I bet the capture method got swapped. Yep. Yep. Because oh. there's there's Windows. T it was on Windows Seven for some reason. I must have clicked, I probably clicked a thing and I didn't realize that I clicked a thing. Why is it so utterly massive? Now it doesn't want to resize. Well, it's a podcast, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, hold on. We can hopefully figure, all right, it's resizing. All right, all right, we're cooking with gas. We're cooking with gas, everybody. We're getting there. We're getting there. There's going to be, we're going to get the Red wall. screen. Yeah, wow, it's so freaking giant. Jesus, okay. All right, we're going to crop in so we don't get infinite Marcos. Why? Well, I mean, we could have infinite Marcos, but it would, <laughs> it would probably murder my processor. One is too much. One, Well, one is enough, I should say. That, that's the better way to say it. Yes. Anyway, all to say... What, 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 that... One second, like I, I paused recording so that I, this will be easier for me to... Oh, no. <laughs> okay, go for it. All this to say... Nothing wrong with being a visual learner, but yes, it, it's hard to read a book after you've seen a movie. Cause then I just, I just, all I picture, like if I tried to read Lord of the Rings, I just see Elijah Wood, but I, I don't, I, you know, you want to make your own, your own face, like of what Frodo looks like. And you can't not when you've like seen the movie adaptation. Nah. Yeah. And I think Lord of the Rings, I think fellowship was coming out or maybe had come out my freshman year. Um, so well, yeah, well, Hobbit. Yeah. So I don't think I even knew who Bilbo was yet. So, yeah, it was fine. I was thinking of him as the rotoscope cartoon Bilbo more than anything else. <laughs> um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Freaking, freaking reading, y'all. But we're back for a Grinding Gear podcast. A little update, a little update that I feel the need to do. You don't know this, uh, Marco, or maybe you do, but um, there hasn't been an upload on the Grinding Gear podcast feed for two weeks. And I do know that there are some of you who only keep up with Kyle and me through our audio only Grinding Gear podcast feed. The reason there hasn't been an episode is because Kyle and I uh, had our big Final Fantasy XIV and Walker finale. We were very super busy uh, with it. And we also had two Final Fantasy XIV interviews following it that took the, the podcast time for the week. So um, what I meant to do was upload a file to this feed to let you all know that Kyle and I have launched a, a new podcast in addition to the Grinding Gear podcast called MSQ and A, which is where our like Final Fantasy heavy interview episodes are going to live. They're going to be special release episodes. It is not a weekly podcast. I want to be very clear. It is not a weekly podcast. It's going to be special release episodes that have um, a lot more editing that goes into them. So if you go and listen to the Jesse episode that is out now, you'll hear a lot of, uh, of audio and scenes and whatnot from Final Fantasy XIV edited in. And you can expect the same thing for our interview with Amanda Aiken that we'll be releasing this Friday. So that's what happened. And also, if you only keep up with Kyle and me from the podcast, Kyle uh, has welcomed his third child into the world, which is why he is now on paternity leave. He'll be gone uh, for the next two episodes. He'll be gone for the next two weeks. Uh, being a dad, I went to go. I went to go meet. The, I got to hold the little kid this weekend. The tiny little. They, they, they look. They just look like little old men at that age. Like, <laughs> I I don't. I think the last time I held a two day old baby was my little brother. Like, and I was in kindergarten. So it's it's been a bit since I've been around that new of a newborn. Um, mm. But it was very wholesome. 
congrats to Kyle. Yeah, big big congrats to Kyle. So, um, and uh, if you didn't catch okay. my uh, emergency solo stream on Thursday, because uh, I didn't know it was going to be solo, I have a wonderful story at the beginning of that show about uh, emergency babysitting. <laughs> Kyle's pre-existing children, Wally and Kristen, ran to the hospital. So go and enjoy that story time. A little promotion there for my Thursday stream. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on here at Grinding Gear. How are things over in uh, in Marco land, Marco? Oh man, they're good. I'm just chilling, you know. I thought I, I said to myself, I'm taking a week off to read and to do other stuff, and then that all got changed. So <laughs> so things things are good. Things are good. We just moved into a really nice apartment, and uh, I live with my fiance now, and and you know the dogs are good. It's finally starting to get nice weather. And, um, I just finished up an eight week YouTube course, which was really interesting and, and eye opening and enlightening and, and, you know, just trying to, um, I hired a script. So this is fine. This felt really disingenuous, but I just hired a script writer to like, start to, to sort of pivot slightly into a, um, for two scripts a month for two months to, to pivot into a more deeper like thing that I can't necessarily do for myself. So that's been exciting. And, and yeah, um, yeah. That's, that's, that's it. I mean, it's, it's, I'm just, I, I live to work. I work to live and I live to work and I love it. I that's love really, it. that's really cool. Uh, there's depending on the projects I've worked on, like in the past, there's been some times where I very heavily, I was just like, boy, I'd, I'd kill for a, for a writer to, to help me on this. It felt so disingenuous, but in the class they were like, you can't really deny the benefits of having a, a virtual assistant and be a writer or like a team. And I already have a, an editor and a thumbnail artist that I was lucky enough to find. And then I just sort of was like, I mean, how can anybody talk about music? Like I'm, it sounds, it, it sounds conceited, but I don't mean it this way, but it's like, I'm the expert on the like craft of what I do. I mean, that, that's, that's why I do it because I like am an expert at it. But uh, in conversation with this guy, he like has done stuff for like, for like, you know, with like uh YouTube videos by Airbnb and, and YouTube videos about like whatever. And I'm, and I'm like, how, how do you become a subject expert in this amount of time? And, but somehow it's, it's just helpful. And I mean, yeah, like imagine video game, like the history of video game music in 15 minutes. I can't write that. I mean, I could, but it would take three months and I just don't have the patience. It's just like daunting. You know what I mean? So I'm really curious to see how that works out. And then, yeah, I don't know what else is new this weekend. We watched my, uh, my fiance was really reticent to watching the office. One of my favorite shows. And I was like, no, no, well, no, you can't, you can't, we, no, you have to. And so I sat her down, we watched a couple episodes and now she's like in I and, uh, have you seen The Office? I had a very uh, almost identical experience, but vice versa. My 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 wife Katie <laughs> uh, loves the absolutely adores The Office, and I was just always a bit of a hipster about it. I was like the oh the Office, yes, yeah, the <laughs> basic television comedy, the quotable because everyone can see it and not everyone can oh, wrap the their gyps. brains around the genius of things like parks and recreation uh -huh. or 30 rock which are comedies that i hold in much higher esteem um <laughs> that's fair but uh and, like it just yeah, the way i got into it was different though it was she just had it on all the time all the time so it was just i was just marinating in dwight quotes um and, oh no <laughs> and it's well eventually i just like i just like something like would hit my brain while i was like chopping onions helping prep dinner and i, I would just start laughing i'm like shit this show is actually kind of hilarious and so at one point i don't i don't remember what the inciting incident was at some point i was like all right let's start from episode one let's go let's i need to see this i need to see it all the way through and now i i still prefer Comedies like Thirty Rock and and Parks and Rec and Scrubs, but 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 the the office is the office slaps. It's it's a very good. It's a very good. It's a very popular comedy for a reason. Yeah, the office is good. Hold on, I'm gonna put you on my teleprompter so I can look you in the eyes. <laughs> Perfect. I, I see you're doing it. I used to have one, um, but I took it down when we redid the studio so that Kyle and I could both stream from it. Uh, oh, so I, well, I, that makes sense. I currently don't it's have a teleprompter. It's nice though, because it's like here you are. I see you. Anyway, yeah. So it's been it's been fun. Um, it's been fun, and and I, I find um just taking breaks is something that I've really I'm always spinning. 
And, and in fact, like my fiance, she was like, it's one of the things I love the most about you is about how driven you are. And I was like, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess that's a nice quality. I was like, but, but also I have a nice smile, right? Like, uh, you know, is that, is that, sorry. <laughs> Just being silly. Um, you can be adorable yeah. on, on live stream. It's totally fine. We accept <laughs> that here. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's hard though. Cause I see what I, so what I really, and I've told you this in private, but like what I really admire about you and Kyle is that you've been able to really, you know, we, we made a joke about how like you guys have taken your very sweet time to get to the end of N Walker, which by all means, and, um, it's actually really inspiring, but that's a separate conversation point. Um, and see on the opposite, I'm, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a, I got to taste all of it. You know, I got to, let me, let me nourish myself with, let me, let me have a little bit of taste of this and a little taste of this and a little taste of this and a little taste of this. And, and literally this is my play style. Like this weekend I played five different video games and I was happy with each of those. Right. And, and it's like, I, I have such a hard time sitting still with one thing, but it does segment an audience because you really should. And this is per my class, you know, you really should be pointing your content for 80% of your audience, 80% of the time. And 20% is you do whatever the hell you want. But in order to have a really locked in, I mean, I saw the stream. I mean, like, you know, That's interesting. what was it? So, so you're taking a, like a content creation course at the moment? I was, yeah, for eight okay. weeks. I took a, I took a course with a, okay. with a guy that worked with like Mr. Beast and he has, he like manages and operates like the, you know, the, the, some of the larger channels in the space. And he hosts this cohort, uh, this was cohort four and it was about eight weeks and we went through literally everything. So it's really, in a way it's kind of nice because I feel like for the first time ever, I actually understand, um, the internal workings of, of YouTube and, and what it means to be a creator in the space. And it's, it's interesting, you know, we like to blame the algorithm for so many different things, but the algorithm is just audience and you can't, you can't blame it's just a ranking system, but, but it's really the audience that drives content. Um, you know, it's not linear. It's, it's not, it's never really like this. It's like, you should see my shit. Oh yeah. It's an absolute freaking roller coaster. <laughs> Um, you know, I mean, I think it's really easy for us to obsess. I'm just reading you the five, the, the five commandments. Uh, you know, data is a tool. You can't, you can't like get freaked out about data because data is just a tool. And I love this one. Obsess over delighting the viewer. That was such a good one. It's so interesting. <sighs> that makes me happy because that's probably anytime we do something that I would describe as high effort. It's, it's usually because we think people are going to get stoked on it. That's usually the driving force. Um, maybe in the early days, particularly of, uh, uh, of Kyle and my YouTube journey, when we started doing like YouTube first content, mm. um, I, you know, maybe in those early days I was doing things cause I thought they'd be, be cool. But I, I feel like pretty shortly after, like maybe in the first six months, we, we really kept locking in on, well, what do we think will make our audience excited? <laughs> um, yeah. And, and so that makes me happy. So the other thing you said about the, the 80, 20 rule, that's an, I've never heard that before, but, but Kyle and I call it, we, we, when we, when we feel ourselves like needing something else, like, like say we've been doing, I, I've never gotten properly burned out on final fantasy 14, but I have gotten burned out on making specific types of final fantasy 14 content. Um, yeah. Uh, our end of last year, I think we did some like four or five story based videos in a row. And I was like, I'm, I'm done. That's I don't, lot. I don't want to overanalyze the story right now. I would like, and I was in this, in this weird place where I'm like, I would love to just keep playing and not worry about making a video, but we've come so far. We were literally four levels away from the, the quote unquote end of the game. So it's like, well, I, I can't, I can't actually stop doing videos. Like we've made this promise. We have this many things. It would suck not to complete the suite. Um, but I was very just like, I just, I, I don't, I don't want to sit down and spend an hour labeling footage, labeling uh, uh, 200 <laughs> gigabytes of footage uh, 
Yeah, it sucks. So that I can sucks. find that footage <laughs> when I go to make the video. Yeah, yeah. It was just that was the thing. I was just like, I just I can't, I can't. I, and then I'm going to go into an out uh, Google Doc and I'm an outline. I just didn't want to do it anymore. Um, so when I feel that coming on, um, and that's that's when we end up doing things like the whole company and World of Warcraft hardcore because it's like we just I just yeah, I need a break. I just need I just need a little like a I've been eating steak. For three months, uh, <laughs> I need some chicken. Uh, I need some sushi. I, I need yeah. something different. Um, and that's when we ended up doing that stuff. And some people were like, oh, no, are you going back to WoW? I'm like, I've been playing WoW in the background the whole time. I just I just haven't put, yeah. I just haven't streamed it. You know, so just all I'm doing is. a little bit of shrimp. Yeah, but I just, you know, I just want to do it out loud and, and get our community involved. And I just need a little break. And Kyle and I, we don't call it 8020 because we weren't aware of that but we we called it we need a christopher nolan because uh, <laughs> if you're not aware christopher nolan has this this mantra of one for me one for them meaning i'm going to make a movie that mm. i want to make and then i'm going to make a movie that i think hollywood wants um and that's how we, uh, you end up with things like batman which is kind of a crowd pleaser but then he goes yeah. and makes dunkirk um, <laughs> yeah, yeah somewhere in between is interstellar which uh, i'm not a huge fan of and i get raked over the coals every time i admit that publicly but yeah huh yeah and then you need Matthew McConaughey yelling Marv while crying for 30 minutes. <laughs> I didn't need it. I don't need that. Was, I'm fine. <laughs> Man, that's so funny. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, see, it's interesting because in, in some ways it's probably easier for, for you and Kyle to, to do that. Let me take off my glasses because of the glare. Um, um what's hard what's hard is um is finding content that like finding finding a way one of the things i struggle with the most with with my stuff is that not to get too in the weeds but um i uh so i like reaction content but reaction content to me feels like a very small slice of a pie right like and if and if and if producing something of a high value <clears throat> and this is just me. I mean, cause like a pie can be deli a piece of pie can be perfectly filling and it can be more than enough. Right. But like, I look at my content, like this is a slice of a pie. It's really good. It's delicious. It works well. It tastes good. But imagine if I gave you the entire pie. Now you might say, well, if you give me the entire pie, I'm going to have a belly ache. So there is that to grapple with, but I've always thought about like, how do I elevate what I'm doing so that it's not just like one individual little tiny song, but like the real like nitty gritty, um, you know, like what makes music really that important and, it, and why music is so important and why we need to understand it. And you, and you can do that on a micro level on my, in my case, but also like imagine just being able to like serve somebody a beautiful giant baked apple pie. And, and, and I, I think about your videos, especially think about somebody like Bricky. That's another prime example of like, you know, like, a, like that's a, that's a, like a three course meal, you know, when you watch a video like that. And, and so I'm always thinking about how to evolve and, and yeah, I mean, yeah, you have to sort of like, I don't know if you have to convince people to come along with you, but you certainly need to be like, Hey, this is good too. And you got to do it like <laughs> one video at a time, you know, and you can't do too much. Otherwise it confuses people and stuff. Yeah, it's, no, it, if you, the if whole, you, the system is. It becomes crazy. too difficult to track if, and, 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 and this is, it's not to say that it's the only, like the only thing, any of us who are making random stuff on the internet pays attention to is, is the numbers, but, but like you need to, for it to be sustainable. And this, this is what I'm all, I'm always, I'm, I feel like I'm always overly sensitive about this because I never wanted to feel like I'm only doing this because it's successful, but I am still doing this because I have found a way for it to be sustainable. Like, yeah, 1 million percent. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I'm, I can see 40 in the distance i you know i've i've respond i started this in my 20s in in 2010 so i was in my 20s i my my i just had to make rent every month and that was it as far as responsibilities as long as i could as long yeah. as i could get kicked out of my apartment i was good um but now now i have you know i'm married and i, I have other responsibilities and so yeah it's, it's just beast. yeah i always look at it like well yeah i'm, I'm older and i, I wouldn't be able to do this if if it didn't help cover a part of my life um and so yeah for me i always tell people like when you get to that point 
like don't feel bad about looking for success because you kind of like in, in a lot of typically when it comes to the reality of the situation, you need a certain level of success to be, to continue being able to do it. I would not be able to put the time that we put into these streams and these videos if, if, if it wasn't sustainable. So yeah, like, like you said, if you, it's all a point to say, like, um, when you start making changes, if you're out there making content, um, don't make too many changes at once because it's really hard to pinpoint what worked and what didn't work. If if, you, if yeah. you look at the analytics and you're like, whoa, um, on either good or bad, whoa, this is really overperforming. Holy crap, what what hit? And the vice versa of that, which is, oh no, uh, this is doing terrible. Why? And it's like, well, if if all you do is change the topic. That's pretty easy to zero in on. But if you change the topic, you change the format, you change the runtime, uh, you change the platform, like that's yeah, you know, too you, many you, variables. You, yeah, it's too many variables. And, and, and the thing is like, I got into a lot of trouble. Well, not a lot of trouble, but there was like a very select group of people that decided that. So when I introduced uh, non-gamers to video game music, those have been my most successful. And they're also like, in a lot of ways, the most fun because I feel like I'm getting to share my world and the world of my you know, my, my constituents is, uh, that's not the word, you know, uh, <laughs> my constituents, wait, vote what is constituent? Marco, vote what Marco does constituent for best... mean? Wait, wait, hang on. Let me clarify. When I say cons constituent means people that's wait, is that right? No, I was, I was, I actually don't know the, uh, you know, Webster dictionary definition, but, uh, it, it's always used. I, I associate it with, uh, pol pol political discussion. Uh, constituents. Wait, hold on. My, uh, my, when, when, so the thing is like, we all like to feel like we're, it's important. I think, I think, okay. So, so here's the thing we see this all the time, but I feel like, um, my peers, yes. My, my, my compatriots, that's the word. Thank you. Um, my constituents. Constituents is apparently a voting member of a community or organization, according to the dictionary. Uh, no, not that, not that. Um, I mean, you know, honestly, really... if you're watching our videos and you're leaving comment, you are kind of voting because, you know, <laughs> if you don't watch it, we will we will make adjustments. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but 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 so um, we really like it when people come and listen to music that we love. And those videos are really fun for me because I get to like sort of grab from my Patreon supporters and stuff. And, and I have them like, what do you want them to listen to? But also like my own interests. And while I was in this course, we decided to um, do an experiment and remove timestamps and see what happens because listicle, I was really upset one day because it was like a, a you know, a, a 20 minute edi edited video takes two and a half hours ish to film. And then it takes four hours for my editor to edit it. This is quite a bit of time. And then because they're listicle videos, so they don't necessarily follow like a path and it's okay. You know, list videos are always going to be like this because that's, I do it. You do it. We all, whenever we're watching something, we're just skimming through unless we're really enraptured. And, uh, and I got really annoyed because it was like a three minute, it was like three minutes watch time for a 25 minute video. It was just pretty bad. Um, and so I was like, you know what? No timestamps. Let me just see what happens. And, and of course, yes, the retention went up, but I got attacked because how dare I waste people's time? Y you, you should know better than, than to like, you know, I, I, we're all really busy and, and, you know, we want to relax after a hard day of work. And, and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, I forgot what the point of me telling you this story is. And second of all, we're talking about making changes. Ah, yeah. And second of all, I have to be able to experiment because it's a, it's a one man show here. Like I'm doing my best. Like, yeah, I have, my editor and my thumbnail artist and the script writer here now in the background helping me. But like, it, it's, it's, it's all me. Like I have no, I'm not like a YouTube. I don't have an expert analyst who's looking at all this stuff and like being like, no, drop the, like, I'm just trying. Um, but yeah, but you have to be so careful. Uh, there was, there was another point there that I don't remember. I wasn't just meaning to complain, but I can't remember it. Uh, yeah. And nice comments, nice comments are like the, like, sweet bread of this like like it's such a communal it's like an it's such a beautiful exchange and when when i get comments that are like you really like help me like point out the way that this arpeggiation is or the way that i, I this electric guitar right here you help me notice it and then that really like filled me with a sense of appreciation for how the music does that and it's like good comments and i know that you and i have talked about comments in our own time but we, like we are emotional 
beings. We are <laughs> we are carrying perhaps a bruised inner child somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Kyle and I have talked on air many times about how we were both bullied coming up in <laughs> in school. So yeah, we were. Uh, we you were... don't like it? Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a a big part of making extremely niche nerdy content that uh, that for Kyle and me comes from being made fun of for being a big nerd when we were younger. Yeah, it's vindication. And so we're, yeah, the, the, like I, <laughs> listen, I know some of the extremely dull jobs that some of the bullies I went to school with hold now. And I just go, ha I get paid to play games. <laughs> I win. That's, that's as, that's as like ego full as I get. Um, on the, on the flip side, uh, uh I, I am, it's funny. You mentioned the, the nice comments. I, I am, I'm coming off of a snowball of the, an avalanche of the most kind comments I've ever read in a row. Uh, with the with the yeah. M Walker, I am uncomfortable. Like I'm legit. I'm not even doing a bit. I'm legitimately uncomfortable with how nice everyone's been. I don't. I'm not used to this. Um, like our our community is pretty damn nice, but y'all have like ratcheted ratcheted it up to like a new level of. Uh, uh, I I had I had to put the YouTube comments down uh, for kindness for a change as opposed to oh oh I shouldn't have read that one. That's gonna live rent free in my brain yeah, for a few days. It's such a good feeling. Um, yeah, everyone's been really nice, and and for me, I think it was the the it, I, I, it was just surreal reading so many comments from people that had clearly been watching since the beginning of Kyle and me dipping our toe into, into Final Fantasy stuff. Uh, I also heard from like a handful of people that have been listening to our, our podcast since like 2010, which is like crazy to hear wow. from. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it yeah, it's just been. It's just been crazy, like realizing that there are, there are people, and I know it, sh- it shouldn't be a surprise. I recognize your your names, everybody. We're in the di- I'm in the Discord every day, trying to to you know keep up and see what everyone's talking about. I recognize you all, but I, there was just something like there was a specificity to some of the very nice comments we got that was talking about like, oh, I remember your first stream when you had no cams, and we ended up just showing off our mounts and. Your one mod that you had at the time was freaking out because there were a bunch of like spoiler mounts, and I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, I do remember that. That was incredible. Um, yeah, and it's just been, it's I don't, you know, I, don't I, I, I don't know how to thank people enough for the right way for it. So it's impossible to think. I mean, like, what what we get to do is like just so incredible. And if you think about where you were, and a lot of it is timing, a lot of it's accidental, a lot of it's luck, a lot of it's positioning. Luck and positioning equals opportunity was something I used to think about a lot um, back when I was exclusively doing voiceover as I was like emailing people every day to try to get like work and and cold calling and stuff. Like one of the things that one has to think about is is just, you know, how fortunate. And um, I was telling my fiance yesterday, I was like, I wish that I had saved some of the comments that were really, 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 really kind. And I wish that I had put them up on a wall and just like screenshotted them, printed them out and just made a wall of positivity because, because it can get, it can get bleak and it can get, it can get, it can get rough. And the thing is like, we have to understand that like negative comments, like someone took the time, like this is literally like, they took the time. I just watched a Gary V video on this today. They took the time to leave something negative, to bring darkness into the world, you know, to, to, and, and as warriors of light, we, we try our best to, you know, to fight with, with, with light. But, but, and it's like, it's like, I can't believe that you would take the time to do that. And, um, nothing. I mean, I'm so glad that I'm so glad that the final fantasy 14 community sort of rallied around both of you and 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 you were able to experience that because I, I remember when I streamed on Walker as well. It was on a much smaller scale, of course, but but it was just so I was so overwhelmed by how warm I felt. And it, especially because you end up feeling like you're part of it. You're not just on the outside. Uh, which is something I sometimes run into where they're like, well, <clears throat> you know, oh opera singer does XYZ. And it's like, well no, actually I've been playing video games since I was seven. Like it's just that's just the way that the title works. But like so for you to be a, an active part of the, you know, to go to fan fest, to be a part of the commun the the community, is a huge deal, and to be able to make videos about it. I mean, you guys, you guys are, you know, I don't want, sorry, I don't want to blow smoke up your ass, but, uh, <laughs> but 
but like it's seriously it's inspiring even to me and and you know i i navigate it with a couple of different fan bases but but the way that you all have really just you know rallied around i mean it's just amazing and and what an amazing what an amazing community you have here and and watching this thing right now i mean that's that's a beautiful thing to 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 like lean on people and they they rely on you and you rely on them and it's a beautiful 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 relationship that we get to sort of foster healthfully ideally with not too much parasocialness and, <laughs> but yeah i mean so I, to the community i can be parasocial with the rest of them like 100 and and 10 percent um uh, hope hopefully yeah i get lucky and get to actually like meet and chat with some folks that i really admire and that's 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 been another outcome of of doing this and uh but yeah and, and it's it all of it like this whole conversation i think is leaning towards how i think of, of making content and the balance between doing things that you enjoy but also things that are successful by however you measure success um but it, it it's a goldilocks zone it's 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 really a goldilocks zone because you know, this is not my first rodeo. It's not Kyle's first rodeo. I don't think it's, it's, it's definitely not yours. <laughs> I mean, you come from a different, a different rodeo, but yeah. Yeah. It's not my first rodeo. Yeah. But yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting because you know, we, we don't, we don't get accused of this, but like it, my brain goes there because I've been on the internet long enough that I've seen other creators accused of, of like game hopping and stuff like that. And I, I get, I get the the concern that it's that it's insincere because I think the vast majority of us, and I certainly feel this way as someone who enjoys, you know, fan based content. Um, like you, you, you probably at some point were drawn to your the first YouTuber you watch, the first streamer you watch, the first podcaster you listen to, be, because they they seemed genuinely passionate about whatever it is that the topic that you were looking to see covered, um, and you know all of them podcasting streaming youtube suddenly when there was money behind it there it did seem like everyone was coming out of the woodwork and still is for that matter to just make a buck and that's how you yeah. end up with like yeah. i'm very cautious of podcasts done by extremely famous people because i'm like well that's not why i started listening to podcasts i started to listen to podcasts because i stumbled over uh, someone I'd never heard of, but they were talking about World of Warcraft as, as the instance. And now it's Scott Johnson, who's yeah. one of the Riding most prolific podcasters train. out there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so I get that, but, but, it's, and so I'm, I'm always con concerned about it, but it, at the same time, I, I think, I hope it shows through. It's like, no, clearly it does. They're, clearly <laughs> they're into a... this. <laughs> um, but like, it, it, but, and, and, and then there's the opposite side of that, which is like, yeah, dump on the thing you came from. Cause I don't like it. I'm like, no, 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 no. I still like, I still like some blizzard games. Um, not overwatch. I, I think mm. they screwed the pooch, but, uh, <laughs> but I, you know, I still, I still like Warcraft. I still have a good time with it. It's just, I'm not so completely over the moon happy with how they're doing things right now that I just, I don't feel a great need or pull to, to make content uh -huh. about it. I did when season of discovery and hardcore came out. Cause I was like, Oh, this is, this is really cool. And that's why we have a video about it. The views are terrible <laughs> because we were talking about wow. And, and not final fantasy, but that, that was like a video that just came out. Of, I'm like, I have to talk about this. I'm just like this for me, it's hitting. I think this is really rad. Uh, Kyle, I want to make a video about it. And Kyle's like, well, I'm having a good time uh, and I'm playing it. So I don't need to do a lot of research. Let's go. <laughs> so that's but having like something that to from. talk about. That's where the excitement comes in. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I totally relate to this. And, and on a smaller scale, like I, um, I don't know how much, how many in the chat checked out some of my Warframe videos, but my, I fell in love with Warframe uh, in December and November of last year. And I mean, Gary, I don't play games it's like final fantasy well, we, we I, were I both playing classic at the time and you were in classic talking to me about warframe <laughs> yes yes i was yes i remember and i i became obsessed with warframe and 
it's the kind of thing where when you find something that feels so good, you don't want to let it go because like you, I think, so first of all, two points. One, I don't think anybody in this audience could ever possibly consider that you and Kyle are not passionate about fantasy 14. How many hours? Have, how many hours? It's got to be at least like 3000 at this point. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's an inordinate amount of hours for, for one game. I yeah. mean, I, know I haven't gotten good of- at it. Like if you ask me what a dark Knight opener is, I have no idea. I don't, I don't Wait, know what my dark night. It's clearly rampart. <laughs> yes, obviously. No, it's plunge. Come on, Marco. Let's go. Haven't you watched me tank? It's plunge. Well, because of you, I just started playing gunbreaker. Cause I was like, Oh, I gotta, I'm watching them play. I gotta get back into this. So now I'm trying to level up my, uh, my gunbreaker. Anyway. Gunbreaker is dope. <clears throat> yeah. Except I don't know the road. I know the rotation for the, for the, for the like aggro pull, but I don't know the rotation for the, um, for the, uh, what's it called for the, uh, Oh my God, the debuff, no, the, uh, the damage mitigations, like the ramparts, the nebula, <clears throat> the, um, you know, do, the do what one. I do and always bind your mitigation to the same buttons, even if they're different names. If it's mitigation, it, like I, oh. I put it on F, I put it on G, I put it on shift F, I put it on shift G, control shift, uh, modifiers of all of that. Mm. Yeah. So, so F and G are, and shift and control <laughs> variants of all of that are usually my mitigation tools. <clears throat> okay, good. That's, that's noted. But, but there's something so like amazing about discovering something that you really feel clicked into. And, and when I, it was funny because so obviously I, I cover a lot of different music on the channel and, and, and I, obviously I, um, sort of found a home accidentally with, with the uh, Genshin impact and with Honkai Star Rail, which I know we'll talk about later. And, and, um, but the funny thing is that like, I like those games, especially Star Rail. Star Rail is really just like, like is really hitting a peak for me right now. But, but I would say that I digest and enjoy things that are a bit of a different scope. So like when I discovered Warframe and I discovered that there was a genuine interest in Warframe, that really was just like wonderful for me. And I mean, I'll never forget that stream. I was, I was finishing up. I think it was the new war, which was the, it's really like the climax. This really like high end part of Warframe. And I don't want to spoil any of it because it's like a must, must experience story. (laughs) Um, the second dream for anybody that's played it in chat. It's just like, so this, the, let me just go on a tangent here. We're on a podcast. I can go on a tangent. So this is what you are is one of the most beautiful songs I've, I've ever heard. And it's just like so stunning. And, and I, I used to work out to it when my dad was really sick because <clears throat> it was, it's like one of these pieces of music that you feel that you can, it like releases a part of your soul. And, um, And I remember I was trying to like somehow like make myself suffer a little bit at the gym so that my dad, like somehow my dad could like heal. It was really a really like strange and powerful moment with this particular song. So then seeing it in in context, I was like, wow, this hits as hard as my personal like suffering that I experienced in my life. This is as good. Well, and, and as good, obviously it's terribly tragic, but what I mean is like it, it matched the level of emotional intensity that I connected to it outside of context. And, um, <clears throat> anyway, long story short, I just, I just fell in love with that game. And it's like, there, there's a reason why those streams were successful, not because of necessarily what I was saying, but because the passion that I felt, you know, 145 hours in two months is unheard of for me. Yeah, that's that's um, a lot. Yeah. And it just, I was like, Psh. So yeah, anyway, no uh, one's that's... no one's denying your passion. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, I'm just, this is a mental exploration. It's not. I'm, I'm not saying it's an accurate. No, thought, of course. But it... yeah, it's that's it's it's cool when those things hit, you know. And yeah, we had um, the synergy. You know, yeah, we were doing hell diver streams there for a bit, and those were doing really well. And I think again, yeah. it just it was coming through that Kyle and I are just we're jamming, man. We're jamming, and and our our wild WoW classic streams did pretty damn good too. Um, the, the videos are always tough. Switching up our videos um, is always hard, but every I like I like video editing. It's something I re- I really enjoy, um, and it's funny because the, the videos are not the the draw, um, and it, it's something we've been. I I think early last year, I think we kind of realized we're like ah oh, huh, we're we're kind of streamers. We just do it on YouTube because um, that's where most people come and hang. They, they come watch the stream. They may watch the stream, like our stream VODs. Like we can, we kind of know if it's going to, if we're going to keep it public and let the algorithm have its way with it. Cause it's like, Oh, well we did uh, the things like final fantasy story. And then like actual difficult boss content, like extremes and whatnot that always does well 
after the fact. And we never thought it was going to, we, we didn't think that was going to be it. We're like, we, when we started this, all those years ago, now the, our first few videos about a realm were born, uh, there's a reason we weren't streaming it. We wanted to make videos. So we're just making videos about it. Yeah. There is no footage of us streaming it because it didn't happen. Except I guess Kyle streamed a little bit of Realm Reborn on Twitch before we started doing this. But yeah, yeah it's just, you know, you're just kind of figuring out as you go. Kind of. I mean, it's just like putting your best foot forward and seeing where it lands. And hopefully, hopefully the, I mean, the things just like line up. It's, 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 it's weird. It, the whole thing is just weird, but it, yeah. it's, it's also nice at the same time. Like it's just, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's you feel it's, like that's enough shop talk for uh you, YouTube shop talk. Oh, I feel let, like I we could just write it into the games you've been playing cuz yeah, I I want to I want to go check in on you. It's hard. I um, love talking about shop, but then I'm also like, well, does everybody love that? I, I don't okay, well, know. Well, well, look, I I've now just selfishly I have a question based on your class. Uh, go ahead. What 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 are Kyle and I doing wrong? based on what you've learned <laughs> where can we improve like legit i'm curious if, if anything kind of sh shines like if you're like oh i mean try I, this i mean i'm no expert just because i t let me see uh i don't <laughs> i think you're doing everything exactly right um i just think that it's it's a it's a it's a, just a process let me see i don't know i don't know why are you asking me this i don't know <laughs> Put me in the spot like this. how do i make a video that isn't about final fantasy 14 work <laughs> That's what I want. Oh, well. Not that I want to do nothing but videos about not Final Fantasy 14, but every once in a while when I rip one, yeah, I'd like more than I'd like more than 5,000 people to watch it. That'd I mean, nice. I think Oh, dude, I don't know. I'm still trying to masticate on the class. I'm, I've been saying masticate a lot lately. I don't chew know on. why. This is you want to Yeah, chew on? chewing on. Yeah, yeah but you say masticate and then some people mishear it and then there's memes in chat and everyone has a good time. So, I wouldn't apologize for that. Well, First of all, what I would definitely say is someone even actually said it is you definitely need to stream on Twitch. You need to multi-stream, period. Oh, that, There's no that, reason with the fan base. That to makes not me sweat. Just use restream. It's probably it it how do you how do you interact with two chats at the same time? I just use my superior brain power. I mean, it's like <laughs> I there's got to be something. I mean, look. To be, be fair, there's got to be something about understanding <laughs> opera that just unlocks a new section of your brain. Because... <laughs> to be fair, like I, I've, I've never had streams as much as you. I mean, like I've never dealt with two thousand people at one time. Or I mean, your end walker stream was like close to like six thousand, which is crazy. Uh, it, was, um, it was actually more than that. Um, but was it? Yeah, Damn. yeah. It's, but that's not normal. That's a, the, the, yeah. The okay, I mean, it's, massive it's, finales from from Final Fantasy fourteen are are a huge draw. So you of really course. can't um, moments when you see, you know, a beloved character come back his younger, ver you know, the, the, the godly version of, yeah, I know, I know, but, but, <laughs> but streaming, you just, you just, you just figure it out as you go. I mean, like you really should. It's like a, it's like, um, the thing is the thing that really threw me off about this course is that every, um, every video is leaving money on the table because you can always change everything you can change the title and the thumbnail from a video from six years ago and it will pop if you just change it have the title be a certain way the problem that i find with with this course is that i think and i think i have this in common with you and kyle is that like we're the type of people that like just want to do it like just want to enjoy it and just like put it out there so, yes i think we both are very grateful all three of us are very grateful that we do it as a job but I think ultimately, like, like I had a comment, I was thinking about starting a newsletter because I would like some more autonomy to just like write and just like one, once a week, once every two weeks, send it out to my patrons or anybody who's interested, like, Hey, these are, this is what I'm playing. This is what's going on. This is a topic of discussion I'm thinking about. I don't feel like making a video about it, blah, 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 blah. And shit, I forgot my point. My point was, damn it. I knew that was going to happen as soon as I pivoted to the newsletter. You're talking about hell? how you're the type of person that just wants to do it. And I was oh, agreeing with you. Oh, yes. And so, but there are a lot of people on here because the gla the ceiling is so high. Like I saw a creator say that they made $30,000 in a month and $3 million in a year. And I was like, bitch, what? <laughs> I mean, that doesn't surprise me thinking about how big some creators the, are but like the ceiling is insane and yeah. it's so it's like but at that point it's like okay well then that person 
I mean, I think like you're right as, as 30 somethings, like functionally we need make to make money to, to live. Um, but, but I don't feel like I'm not drawn to, I mean, the money's really cool, but what I'm drawn to is the, the creative elements, the, like the deepening of like the emotional connections to stuff, right? Like the, the conversation around something that I love and vice versa for you guys, I assume it's the same. So, so that's what I didn't like about the course is that the course was like, this is how you go viral. This is how you make, you know, you try to position a video so that it gets the most views possible. But it's like, well, yeah, but I mean, like, I mean, okay, but it, it, if a video does well, I mean, like, that's fine. You know what I mean? It, like, yeah, it's hard to break. It's hard to break out of that. And I, I think, I don't think it's bad to be hungry. No. And for the, and also just like that, that angle specifically, I, I, I really like it if you're thinking about it from the aspect of why wouldn't you want the effort you've already put in to get in front of the most people? Like it's, it's another, if, if again, you're like drastically changing who you are or the type of content that you want to make to try and chase the views. It's not, if you're just trying to get more views for something that you are passionate about that you do believe in. I mean, I, look, I mean, I've had people leave because I was like, hey, you know, this song from this random game that maybe a small minority of people have played, it's not going to do well algorithmically. So like, I've I've had people be like, well, that's not the channel that I, a patron, a couple of patrons, you know, that's not the channel I signed up for. Yeah. And I was like, well, what can I possibly do for you? I mean, like, I try my best to make sure that, you know, I, I stopped doing requests for reactions because... Because it just, it, 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 I have no control, and um, and I and I sometimes do feel like I'm sort of stuck in a, in a sort of bubble, and part of it's because I'm a bit of a, I can't actually say this word, but I'm a bit of a, you know, I I like to meander, and I like to experience, like I could never do what you and Kyle have just done, and continue, and will continue to do. I could not do it. Because I'm just like, I just, I get bored. I, I'm, I am the most, I'm a Virgo, not that it matters, but I'm the most like stable, locked in person for like the things that involve my life, like my relationship and, you know, my love for my family and my, my dog and like whatever. But when it comes to video games, man, I want to play the field. Like, give me that, 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 give me that. And so, like, you know, anyway, I don't know what the point is. But the point is, like. The way about my weekends. Yeah, I want to go to Disney one weekend. I want to go to a concert the next. I want to get out of state yeah. and go, like, drive in the mountains the next. Because I, I, like, you're I need, consistent. I need my weekends to be weird. Um, yeah. But I want my Monday through Friday to be the most predictable, like, <laughs> regimented thing I could possibly <laughs> imagine. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, I wake up and I'm like, what am I going to do today? Cool. I'm going to film the video about the different, what is art? Is art, what is art and are art and entertainment the same thing? You know, that's what I did earlier. I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to film this. Oh, wait, hang on. The eclipse is happening. Oh, it's suddenly dark. Anyway, <laughs> do you, would you like to take a break, get a water and go look at go stare directly at the sun for a few minutes? No. No, I'm all right. I'm fine. I'm having too much fun. Neither of us are in fun. states with particularly impressive eclipses from where we're, Mine, where we're living. Yeah, no, it's. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, and chat, don't go either. Don't sh- leave. Yeah, unless you're in like Texas, then it's it's supposed to be pretty amazing. Go outside for a few minutes. We'll be here <laughs> when you get back. Uh, go, go, go make a core memory. Go do it. Well, speaking of. Uh, oh, I just dropped. So I've been fiddling with an Allen wrench the whole time. Oh, you got a busy box? Yeah, Kyle and I call that a busy box. I have a uh, airplane safe multi tool for cameras that I like to play with because it doesn't. Oh uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, it yes, has yes, no yes. knife, so you can bring it on an it airplane. Just, it, hel- it just helps the old noggin, just yeah. kind of stream of thought. But um, I know, obviously, Final Fantasy fourteen. You've been loving Helldivers too. You said in a podcast or in a video that I wanted. To, I did want to selfishly. I know you have movie or movies. You have <laughs> videos about it, but I, I played a little more Helldivers over the weekend. Um, probably the longest break I've taken in a bit. It's simply just because we've been busy with the Endwalker finale. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Hell, Helldivers is probably my game of the year. I'll be very surprised if anything beats it. it is, How could it not be? It is frankly? the most impressed I've been with a game. It's just the most I've loved a game since since kind of falling in love with Final Fantasy fourteen. Um, why is the music so 
goddamn good in that game. Uh, is it just because it makes me think of things like Predator and Terminator? Um, or or is there something deeper happening with the Helldivers 2 music? Because uh, I, I, I think it's... It's, it's, in, it's, I, to me, it seems like a triumph what they've accomplished with, with the music and also just, um, mechanically how it functions in the game, because it only comes online when certain things are happening. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just fun for, for, for starters. I mean, certainly the, the main theme is like your pure nationalistic thing. And, and also, I mean, you know, Wilbur just wrote such a good melody. And I think, and it, and it opens up a conversation about the importance of melody and, and why, how many pieces can you hum from Final Fantasy fourteen? you think? Probably more than 10. Yeah, that's huge. Then yeah, that's it, because... It's bonkers. The, and then I think of all of the MCU and I'm like, the Avengers theme? That's it. Yeah. One. I got one right. from all right. of the MCU. Right. right, and you know why that is, right? Yeah, because the Avengers theme is the only like memorable melody in the whole thing. Yeah, melody is like, in my opinion, and it sounds super like, you know, extra, but melody is the spice of life. Melody is the thing that makes life amazing. Melody is the thing that it entrances us, locks us into a sound. Melody is everything. And we've seen over the last, I don't know, th this whole discourse happened with Dragon's Dogma 2 and um, with Uematsu because Uematsu, uh, uh, the maestro posted a, um, you know, that article where he was basically saying that most video game movie, uh, most video games are now gravitating towards the movie style of sound. But what Soken does is he retains that melodic core that, and here's the thing, how many wow melodies do you remember? Again, I could probably have more than 10. Yeah, although that's slightly more ambient, but but like... Yeah, yeah, but you, you have a core theme to almost like every expansion, and there's been how many expansions have there been? You could probably yeah, yeah. retain most of them. Um, and, and then for me also just like my buy-in, I was so into it during the BC to wrath era that. So it locked I, in. Yeah. I could probably like hit you with, um, like probably half the zones in wrath, definitely howling fjord. And, um, what's the redwood? Oh, howling fjord, sound? howling fjord and, uh, grizzly, the, grizzly, grizzly hills. hills. The, I mean, everyone, da -da -da, every, everyone, when they think of, uh, when they think of like pre Kata or the Warcraft can probably pull grizzly hills from their head. Um, I hear it. I don't hear the melody, but I hear the soundscape and that soundscape, like, just like, it's just so, <laughs> well, anyway, point, point is, is I think that that's why the Helldivers 2 main theme is so good because it's so singable. Ba, 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 ba. You know, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's actually it. Yep. And then, yeah, you get ba, 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 ba. That's fine. But it's actually just five notes really in, in its theory. Right. And What's really cool is that then when you land and you get to the the ground area, automatically, and this is literally in my video, by the way, but like the <laughs> tension, the tension there is is it's all just bubbling up. And 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 we're not supposed to remember that. We're supposed to be an emotion. And again, uh, music equals emotion through sound, emotion sustained. And I feel like music is one of the only things, let me make sure I'm saying this right because I don't want to make a blanket statement, but in my opinion, I'll word it like that, music to me is is emotion that we can actually like, and, and you can't hold down music as you know, but but me, like music is emotion that we can physically like hold on to in some way, sustain, prolong, um, name, you know? It, how many times have you been sad or happy or anxious and you listen to a piece of music that does those same things. And you're like, oh, this is sustaining my happiness in a way that I didn't have the words to describe for four minutes. It like cuts through the bullshit of my life. And it, can I swear on this? Yeah, yeah, go for it. All right, well, fuck. <laughs> and it allows you to just lock in, you know? So anyway, that's really poetic, but that's how I feel about music. And that's how I feel about the Helldivers 2 theme, especially. I played it last night. Um, it's just, I mean, you can't not smile. I mean, it's just like so good. Yeah, I, I just, I, as a '90s kid raised on '80s movies, I shouldn't have been watching as young as I was. Like, yeah, it it, it transports me. Like suddenly, I'm yeah, it's like Schwarzenegger <laughs> blind firing into the jungle <laughs> because his squad mates just got picked off by an alien from another world. And actually, mm. Schwarzenegger's in both of the things that I think about. It makes me think of Predator a lot. It makes me think of Terminator a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of similar, yeah. uh, the, pre- if y'all haven't watched the first predator in a while, that, that soundtrack bangs so hard. Um, it's, oh God, we just don't freaking make them like we used to, except we are because Dune two just came out and that shit makes me think of like the, the golden age of like eighties blockbuster cinema, um, Ooh, even though we had an eighties Dune, but it's very different. It's very different. My dad, my dad used to love the eighties Dune. I remember that was the first Dune I saw. He also loved Children of Dune, the really bad TV miniseries. I'm, I'm aware of his existence. I've never, I've never seen it. I'm a huge David Lynch fan, and I've never seen the eighties Dune. Kyle loves it, and and could kind of take or leave the new Dune because he loves the eighties Dune so much. I, um, I, I haven't seen the second half, but I'm, I'm sure I would like it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, but that too. I mean, what's nice is that Hans Zimmer. Well, so what's crazy to me is that Hans Zimmer has written like a lot of really good video like i think he wrote world at world at war the call of duty world at war uh i believe that's correct and that shit is scary um yeah and it's like got that like zimmer soundscape but then also there's there's a bit of melody involved i mean i love i love the again again though i mean it's just two notes and yet it like it's so distinctly modern warfare 2 is what he wrote yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it's, you, it's, it's like the same thing. You think of the, the other, um, you know, John Williams and Jaws. Like, that's two notes. Yeah, <laughs> and right. everybody right. knows it. Um, yeah, I, I, Zimmer, Zimmer's interesting because I, I think I think it's easy for a lot of folks to kind of think of him as the, like, kind of ambient tension guy. But he, he has come up, like, even Dark Knight, which a lot, I think a lot of people, when they think of mm. the homogenization of superhero movies, might 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 criticize that one because there is a lot of just kind of ambience that doesn't stick with you in dark Knight. but the the main heroic theme when it comes in like you can hum that like when batman starts doing heroic shit like is it as memorable as as you know the 80s batman maybe not but mm-hmm. I, I, I still like i still like Zimmer. i mean there's he a reason why good stuff god there's the there's the, the there's an interstellar song that everybody plays on the piano it's like a like a popular tiktok song and i uh I don't listen to it anymore because I used to cry to it before everything happened in my life. So I won't listen to that because it's like mm. one of these pieces that just like sits in your body and it makes it feel so heavy uh, and it makes you think about your entire life. Um, music, music is crazy. It's, I mean, yeah. So, so hell divers too. I think that's why it's, I think that that's why it's so good. And it's just like, it just hits a spot. That's so, I don't know. It's, it's very, I mean, it's just galvanizing, you know, just as like, yeah, yeah. And that, that's it. Like, and that's a feeling enough, I think. And yeah, I really, I, come on, 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 come on. I think we're live. I think we're back. And I think we're patching the same stream, which would be delightful if that, if that's what happened. Huh. Hi stream. Are we, are we back? There appears to be an OBS update that I do not have, which might be, the issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. I believe we're back. All right. We're back. Okay. Uh, hopefully that'll be the only one that happens. If it happens again, we'll just do this. I'm so, uh, ugh, ugh, ugh. Yeah. The lighting on you has changed dramatically. As a matter of fact, I'm going to darken myself a little bit to kind of join you. Um, just, um, I look like a, a vampire. Um, oh my god! They're saying you're muted again. Hold on. Oh yeah, so you were muted when we started, and because it crashed, uh, nothing saved. All right, say something. Hello, I'm not muted anymore. Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> so where do we leave off? Uh, we were we were, we're, we're, we're putting a bow on hell divers. We we're putting a yeah, bow on hell divers. Yeah, was waxing poetic about the hell divers theme song. Yeah. Um, it's, it's good. <laughs> I think, yeah. It was good. Yeah. I mean, there's this, there's almost nothing to say about it. You know, it's just good. And then the, the, it's nice that the Terminids and the, um, automatons who we have successfully wiped off of the galaxy. Clearly they will never return and we will never, never, yeah, we will, they will never return and we will not pay dearly for our transgressions at all. No, this isn't, this doesn't seem foreboding whatsoever. I really wonder what's going to happen next. If a, a new, more strong version, uh, Marco unmute. You're good. Turn around. They're, they're, oh. they're, they're catching up. Oh, they're catching up. Okay. Um, but yeah, what else are you playing? 
probably nothing. That's that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it right now. Um, I uh, uh, that that's kind of that and that and fourteen. Um, every time I get a spare a spare moment, that's that's what I want to do. I like that. That's fair. Sorry, I'm like still okay. No, they're fine. All right, don't listen. Yeah, no, that, I'm not looking. Like... <laughs> I'm not looking. Can confirm you are fine. <laughs> what have I been playing? What haven't I been playing? What's, uh, you've been play- I know you've been playing a lot of Honkai Star Rail, which is I I am unfamiliar with that, and I uh, but it's from the creators of Genshin, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, so that this one I, is Genshin's not turn based. Genshin is action. No, it's right? like, yeah, it's like, yeah. And, and so Honkai is turn based. Yeah, Honkai okay. is turn based. And uh, I swear, man, I was never. I played Genshin for like all of ten seconds, and I was like. All right, and then also, do you like my shirt for, for all you Monster Hunter fans? Hulu Yaku loops. <laughs> this is an inside joke, but Hulu Yaku is a is a Monster Hunter. Uh, anyway, uh, how do you do this for two hours? How do you just talk for two hours? Uh, Even I can't do that, and I love to talk. It's it's so easy, um, especially when Kyle is here. But I also yep. I will remind you, we came from the world of podcasting. Um, oh yeah yeah um but yeah. also it was it's you're easy to talk to so it's also easy to, it's oh easy God. it's easy to burn stop the hours with you, sir stop flirting um <laughs> no but but uh yeah yeah so Hawkeye star rail is really interesting because i actually don't necessarily think that the music is it's like fine the music's not that good i mean it's it's not bad um but it, it certainly so it's a really interesting time because Yu Peng Chen was the composer for Genshin. And, and I really, I wasn't into like anime style games forever. Um, and, and then I was like, I, the music is really good. Like it's like super classically based. It's got some EDM in there, which is fun. But most of it is like super structured around, around, um, you know, classical music. And, uh, and then I started playing it and I was like, oh yeah, it's fun. Um, but it's interesting how divisive it is and how divisive gotcha games are. And then it like actually opened the whole door to me to like what gotcha games even are. And I was like, whoa, um, this is actually like like legitimately good experiences. But I, I do get a lot of vitriol my way towards the gotcha because a lot of people are really anti-gotcha, which is fine. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you and I have talked about it because I, I tend to avoid games with it. Uh, but like to me... Why I, wouldn't you? I mean... To me, like the gotcha thing, it's it's one of those topics that people are so polarized polarized on that whether or not you want to get drawn into a debate about it, debates will be fired your direction from cannons, and and you can just decide to engage or not. Um, no. I would say, yeah, I mean, the, and, that's, and that's another reason why I really love Warframe is that Warframe doesn't leave you with FOMO. Um, like, like you can collect any Warframe you want with, with the exception of, well, no, even Primes. I mean, you just collect the materials and just, and grind them. But Warframe is amazing because anything you ever want, you just have to put in the time and you can get it. But like, I love that. And don't get me wrong. I'm not a fan of, I'm not a fan of like, like 50 50 where you have a 50 chance 50 50 chance of losing so imagine you're free to play you spend hours upon hours trying to get something you lose the 50 50 and then you have zero gems to get it and then you immediately have to decide if you want to use your credit card that sucks now as a person who swipes i'm like well that's fine but you know i mean it, it, it sucks and and I really I hate fifty fifty like the idea that you may not get it's the same thing as Overwatch loot boxes you know but yeah. but in some ways it's and that's why I, I don't it's get worse because as a character I'm not militant that's why I'm not militant about gotcha games because I I like card games I've played Magic for years I've yeah Hearth- Hearthstone was the last <laughs> what am I gonna get <laughs> massive piece of of content that I did like that and here's a storm with, with Kyle which also had loot boxes. Um, but so like, yeah, I, I get it. Like I'm, I'm in, but I like card games. Like, what are you going to do? Not play a card game that has booster packs. Good luck finding a really good right. one with an active community. Right. Like you're, yeah. you're kind of out of luck. Um, uh, 
it's an interesting thing. And, and I do think that like the discussion around, I know this was a tan tangential to what you were talking about, but, but I, I've thought about it a lot, but also like, it's like, you know, people like to be like, well, it's not good for children. And I'm like, where are the parents? You think you can't like, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's the thing, right? I didn't have a credit card when I was 13. I, I think it's the, uh, to dissect the topic and like why I think those of us in the gaming sphere end up like whether we want it or not, uh, whether we want to or not getting drawn into debates about gacha mechanics is because it's, it's like, it's a layer. It's already beneath the gate of needing to be literate about games in the first place to even understand it. Yeah. It's complicated. You, you, like, cause like, cause I'm, I'm with you. I'm like, Hey, well, where are, where are the parents? Because that makes me think of like the, the, like Tipper Gore, <laughs> like the eighties and nineties and getting the parental advisory stickers on CDs and the, the violent video game panic of the nineties and all that kind of stuff where it's just like, well, why aren't we having those? It's cause like, well, we are already playing games. Like we've already gotten past that debate. This, this is sadly a debate that's kind of exclusively within the realm of people that play games. And so, yeah, it's because like, it's it exists, an eternal gonna, cycle. Yeah. It's like, you know, with the, there's, you, you can't play blizzard games without at some point having a discussion about like the lawsuits and the, the, the yeah. toxic culture oh, of yeah. that studio. It's, it's just gonna, it's just going to happen. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, that's an interesting one to me, but yeah, I look, yeah, I don't know. There's some, for some reason, gotcha games. I'm just like, it, it is a turnoff for me. And I, the simplest way I put it is, I don't have enough time for games I really, really want to play. So <laughs> it's an easy way for me to be like, I don't need to think about that game right now. Because well, what I, w what I, I would still say, beaten Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> <laughs> what I would say, though, is that um, Honkai Star Rail is a really fun turn based game and it's really free to play friendly, which is really nice because while there's always that FOMO, I think, like you, you, you could. <clears throat> you they they do like dole out gems i mean like i've been trying to rebuild like my my currency because i there is a couple characters i want on this next patch and for me that's like it's it's fun but honestly i didn't mean to become like and i i say this like with with like with no conceit in my heart like i didn't mean to become the genshin mihoyo like pete like gotcha game music guy which is partly like my my i, I have no problem in saying that like a a lot of people come to my channel because of those things. And those are, that's a bucket of my content that I know that people enjoy and whoa. And it, um, it's really dark and, uh, <laughs> and we'll, we'll come back to. And so I'm grateful for that. And, and, you know, I mean, I do think that that music has substance and no composer. And <laughs> this is a funny discussion. Uh, you know what I've started doing? I've started challenging people and challenging myself uh for a really long time and it's actually funny I've, I've had people that have told me that they've unsubscribed because i am too positive but like when dragon's dogma 2 i played through 28 hours of it and i got the first there's multiple endings but i got the first ending and i i realized that there was another bit of, of gameplay and i was like you know i've i've played the game i've i've enjoyed this meal um but i'm ready to put it down like i'm i'm good um and uh and i i made a video where i was like you know it's like nine 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 point nine thousand views it's like it's fine and i was like you know i don't think this music is very good i think it's fine i think the gameplay is amazing i think it works perfectly well with the gameplay but when compared to dragon's dogma one i don't think that it has as much substance and what i realized and, and there obviously there's always going to be someone that's like sort of agitated by that but I felt like it was really important for me to be like, look, I didn't really, I didn't, you know, and then people are like, well, you didn't really finish the game and shit. But um, anyway, so with Honkai Star Rail, um, I think it's pretty like, I think it's, I think it's okay to be like, I don't really like this model. Uh, I don't really like the system, but I'm going to talk about it, you know, in the way that I, I lost my train of thought again, because it's so dark now, to be honest with you. And I'm not, I mean, because I'm not looking at, let me look at the I'm, I'm following back. along where you were. Okay. Yeah. But, but let me just say one thing. There's been a trend lately of these gotcha game companies putting out single player game experiences. So I'm talking ground blue fantasy relink. I'm talking fate samurai remnant. I'm talking X asterisk on the iPad. I'm talking, um, Oh God, there was another one. There was another really good one. 
Stellar Blade that's coming out was made is made by the same company that made Nikkei Goddess of Victory. Do you know about Nikkei Goddess of Victory? First time hearing it. Don't look it up. Okay. It's just too complicated to explain. But do look it up in your spare time. Point is, uh Oh my god, it's spelled like Nike. That's why I was having trouble. Oh, N I K K E. Ah, okay. Great story, great plot. Anyway, the point is, is that, so these, these gotcha game companies are reinvesting the money that they've made from gotcha into these like very high quality, single player, legitimate, non gotcha experiences. And to that, to me is a huge win. Like ground blue fantasy relink is amazing. Like amazing. And in a great co-op game for you and Kyle, just say, and me. I course. do. I do eventually want to play it. Um, yeah, it's, it's so just, good. We, we, that's, 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 that's a sub topic in my brain of uh we have found we have we have found a community in final fantasy 14 and i'm steeped in it all the time and and i'm constantly being exposed to experiences that are in that in that wheelhouse the only issue the major issue that stops me from going after all these other experiences is the raw hours to get through them (laughs) yeah well yeah i mean they're all long games um and and it can be it, it, it can be daunting i don't i don't know when to crack that seal because well here's the thing man i mean all i gotta tell you is that there are like 13 other final fantasies that you and kyle need to play through for your community and Mm. i need to come and be a part of and watch and experience and really you need to start with final fantasy 9 the best final so wait wait, which ones are you leaving out because there's more than 13 uh that we have no but you've already played oh wait no no hold on my brain math no, I'm sorry. 15. There's 15 you have to <laughs> because there's Oh god. Fantasies. And then what oh, about 102? And what about the 13 sequels? And no, no, just just watch no. a movie of 13. Just... <laughs> I struggle with 13. And I'm never going like... to do a reaction track to Advent Children. Um <laughs> uh but we won't be able to do that until after the thir- the third remake and tactics game and then there's also tactics yes you are correct i've played a yeah. little little bit of tactics unfortunately on the phone don't do that the phone version is no, terrible no, everybody it, do not play bad. the phone version it's very bad um okay. but yeah that, that's interesting here i didn't know that um like because obviously uh, stellar blade is is getting a lot of publicity right now um yeah. i didn't know that was coming from a, a a studio that has a background in gotcha have you ever heard have you ever heard me go off on one of my uh, completely unhinged rants about how video games are like the car industry <laughs> no, no. I'd so I really like that. cars. Uh, folks, folks in the chat right now, they're fully, they know where I'm, where I'm heading with this. I, my other, I have a couple other passions. And one of them is I, I like cars. I like vehicles. I think they're cool. Um, and if you, if you're a car enthusiast, you, you probably like cars that are fun to drive. Those are usually some form of sports car. They don't sell well. Sports cars are not high volume sellers. Uh-huh. They're expensive to develop, and it's very rare when we get a new one. They are funded by boring cars that drive poorly, like SUVs and minivans and crossovers. <laughs> 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 you need to sell those so that you can get the enthusiast experience that you want. Like you, you need, right. like if you like a if you like a Toyota Supra, you gotta just like grin and bear the, all the Rav fours that they're selling. Like, <laughs> so, um, although it's maybe not a perfect analogy because there's plenty of people out there that do like gotcha games, but that's, I mean, maybe it is a perfect analogy because that's like the crowd pleaser that's going to bring in that feels serious capital and allow the development of a more niche product, um, for what you might call a more hardcore audience. I mean, I'm speaking. Gotcha. Generally. No, no, I completely under, I, I mean, I completely agree with you. I, I, I don't know as a person who, you know, I don't really feel like, like, look, my heart and my home is, is final fantasy. Like it has been, it will be, it forever is like, if I, if I could only make final fantasy content, I would, um, will I No, uh, that's impossible. Uh, but I would love to, um, final fantasy is the reason I got started in music. Final fantasy is the reason I got started. Like my entire life changed because of final fantasy seven, even though, I have opinions about it, um, which we will get to. Yeah, I'd but, like to talk to you about that. 
but so like the gotcha stuff like i feel like i come at it from like a different perspective like i'm like okay yeah it's fine it's 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 fun i really like honkai star rail i like that it's turn-based the character animation i feel that there is a high quality like i feel that it's high quality therefore i'm more willing to invest my time in it i don't just do it because of views i mean i actually do think that the music is pretty good and um and that's that's where i come at it from it's not like it's it's not like final fantasy where like i'm literally replaying final fantasy 9 right now with the 9999 um like cheat mode activated because i'm just like wanting to experience those characters again like i am deeply connected to to final fantasy and that's that's like a game i identify with metal gear solid i identify with you know um the the same way that people identify with persona or with genshin or with or with monster hunter i identify with final fantasy metal gear solid red dead redemption oh. and yeah both uh i love red dead i played red dead redemption 2 like it was my full-time job when it came out god i, love I red played dead. it for 13 hours a day hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> brother oh man yeah so so like yeah we could talk about that so like you know that's 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 my allegiance uh but like as far as as far as these other things like I, I just like them that's why when people get really upset with me about gotcha i'm like dude i don't care man like i'm not i got no dog in the fight i yeah, pull because like, it's fun yeah if you're like, having a good time like that's I mean, like, at the end of the day it's really all that matters like you're a yeah. you're a, an adult that can make your own decisions <laughs> yeah. like yeah, i mean I, I don't like final fantasy enough to play ever crisis i'll tell you that much you know what i mean like, <laughs> no offense guys i just guy what uh titanfall 2 i'm an enthusiast of titanfall 2 and that is that is uh the only let me i gotta think for that might be the only single player campaign that i think holds a candle to a valve experience Ooh, it is up you there know what's funny with haven't half life and portal for me haven't played the campaign uh, for titanfall 2 it's on my oh, content shit. It's on my content list. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm going to do it this year. Oh, yeah. So it's, 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 I've heard it's like, God heard it's like, damn geez. incredible. It is, it is I don't want to overhype it, but uh, what, no, like, no. How can I overhype it? How the internet has already overhyped it, but <laughs> it oh, is. And Ace Combat. Ace Combat, dude. Ace Combat 7. I am so in the rabbit hole of Ace Combat. I bought a PlayStation 2 so I can stream Ace Combat 0, 4, and 5. And I have six sitting over there for my oh, Xbox. God, such a nostalgia place. for PS2 cases. I went and watched your, your Ace Combat video after your first appearance on our podcast because I was just like, wait, Ace, Ace Combat has music that's memorable? <laughs> oh, my God. I was not prepared. I was not prepared. Dude, it's all I listen to. Tiberian Sons. You know the guy, you know, Command and Conquer, Red mm -hmm. Alert. Yeah, they made a cover CD of of it's called Anthems of Liberation. One of my people on my um, Discord pointed out to me, dude. I listen to it, no joke, every day. It is so good. Oh my god. Anyway, yeah. So our, yeah. Our, uh, Ace, Ace Combat. I also love. Sorry, now you got me. I also I love. Um, I don't love flight sims, but I the first game I ever played. I played two games when I was a kid. European uh, European flight simulator combat a European combat flight simulator on on uh, my Windows ninety seven okay and Jedi Outcast nice nice yeah. uh, I was a I was a X wing versus Tie fighter kid oh, uh, oh. playing with a with a flight stick oh um, that was my that was my shit that's I, like I, peak uh, Star Wars yeah and I remember beating the original Dark Forces without a sound card oh so my I, god I played through that whole game silent because I wanted to play it so bad. <laughs> Um, because I already did, had did, to convince my parents to buy more RAM so it would run. I was not also going to win the <laughs> please also buy a sound card fight. That wasn't going to happen. Did it make you nauseous? I couldn't play Dark Forces. I like I would legit almost threw up. I was no, I have a first person shooters. I have a stomach of absolute steel. We need Kyle oh. here to to be with you on the motion sickness part because he oh, he suffers terrible. he suffers some pretty pretty serious motion sickness. Oh. Um, I I am in a family of motion sick people, and I I could eat a three and course meal and jump on a roller coaster and be fine. Like, okay well yeah. where were you built different because i could not I, uh, uh. I, I guess so i guess so uh, i always felt like weirdly i felt like the odd man out growing up because everyone else was like you, getting and sick it, and stuff yeah well yeah growing up in florida you, you end up on the water a lot um so <laughs> yeah you found you find out that you're in a family full of motion sick people very quickly um oh, man that's but yeah yeah, yeah no, i'm I, lucky i take after my dad in that way dark forces man 
I I played so much Jedi. I was in a clan for Jedi Outcast when I had like 32 bit internet, and I, it was called They Might Be Jedi TMBJ, and it was based. Oh, off that's of the fantastic! Band. Like they, they know, might be giants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <sighs> yeah. My roommate in college was a huge They Might Be Giants fan. Um, what a weird band! But they're also, like, quirky as hell. Um, I, know. I love them. They're so charming. Like, yeah. Uh, How can you not? How can you not be into them? But you brought up Final Fantasy, which means it's I have a Final Fantasy bumper. I'm going to hit it now because I want to pick your brain about seven. So yes. let's let's get into what's your Final Fantasy. What, what's your fantasy? We haven't done one of these in a while. This is I play this bumper when Kyle and I are usually are going to talk about <laughs> a Final Fantasy is some sort of Final Fantasy heavy topic. But you went on a journey uh, a little bit ago now. But uh, you and I haven't really sat down and had a chat about it, so I figured I'd talk to you about it here yeah. because I I'm like I'm just champing at the bit to play to have some sort of Final Fantasy VII experience. The M Marker finale really really uh, got in the way of that for me um, uh-huh. in a great way. It was incredible, and I really want to keep playing. I want to see the raid super bad. But you, I think last time you were on, I think you threw a little shade. Final Fantasy VII's way. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna describe it that way. Everyone be nice, whether you like it or you or you hate it. Just be nice. Just be nice about takes right now. We're we, mm. we want a, a safe take zone. This is a safe take zone. Um, and then I'm assuming in the lead up to Rebirth, you, I don't know if you replayed it or if you just rewatched. Uh, OG, I rewatched. Okay, OG Final Fantasy VII because I was enjoying your out of context tweets very, very much. Because they started grumpy, and as you went yeah. through your re-experience of OG Final Fantasy VII, they just started getting more and more kind of glowing. Uh, and there's yeah. there was definitely a turning point where you could see through your tweets of, oh, oh shit, oh this is oh this is so much more dope than I remember. <laughs> yeah. Now I have to avoid like thirty year spoilers, no longer less than that. But yeah, dude, I how do I start this? Final Fantasy VII is very good, but I and now and I know I know why. I even bought a book about Final Fantasy VII in the process. Like that game is revolutionary, right? First Final Fantasy on the PlayStation, you know. First Final Fantasy to use 3D graphics, like like you know, One Winged Angel, you know, basically based off of the Rite of Spring, like by by Igor Stravinsky and like all that stuff. But it is so hyped, and I and I and I I hear it talked about so much that it it, it just it bothers me. And now I'm really this is going to be really okay. Now I'm nervous to say this publicly. The shipping wars destroy it for me. <laughs> I don't care about shipping. I picked Miranda in Mass Effect Two. My I man. am all. <laughs> and Kyle's not here to shame us. Oh, he probably picked uh He's a tally guy. Of course. Yeah. yeah course, and, and so he's sitting there in his hipster tower of oh, oh you went whatever. for the pretty human. Miranda and I had a real connect. Anyway, point is Same. I <laughs> you have to fight me for. Her. <laughs> the the shipping wars actually deeply upset me. And and I find them incredibly frustrating. And mm. that there is a whole swath of the community that actually is like viciously toxic. If you disagree with them, yes. it's crazy. So yes, you, yeah, uh, you gotta, uh, I have, I have no, I have no deeper advice to give than just, you gotta ignore them. You have to, you have, cause otherwise it, I think shipping's kind of, shipping's kind of fun. It can be, there's a lot oh, of fun yeah. energy. There's a lot of people that have a ton of fun with it. If you, I love catching two people disagreeing in chat in a fun way where they're just like trying yeah. to one up each other with what they find attractive about the fictional character. And because they're fictional, I find it mostly harmless. So yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think shipping can be really fun, but you're absolutely right. Like there's the amount of times going through, through 14. We, we did a, we did a tier list of waifus in Final Fantasy 14. And oh. I think it's our most downvoted thing we've ever done. <laughs> Oh no! Well, it was obviously Horshafon, right? Uh, yeah. Well, he would be a husband, though. But, but, so, 
I, you know, it, it, I find I find that discussion really interesting. And so Final Fantasy VII holds a special place in my heart because it was one of those games that I, I played for quite a bit. And um, it was the first game I played on my PlayStation when I got it. And I had a pivotal experience with it. I did everything, everything, everything yeah. you could possibly do in Final Fantasy VII, I did. Um, and I and I, at the end, it was funny because my mom came in as I was fighting the final boss, which I know you know who it is, but I don't know. And uh, just in case I spoil something for, for a, that old of a game. And um, and she was like, you got to turn it off. And like one winged angel came on and I was like, no, mom, you don't understand. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't say I got, I can't save right now, mom. And, you know, and uh, so I had to redo it. I think that that really locked in with me. And as the years went on, I became a little bit like, oh my God, everybody talks about seven. Like it's like the second coming of Jesus Christ. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a good game, but I was just whatever. So then as a, as, and then I played remake and I found remake incredibly tedious, but I never liked Midgar. I never liked the first mm. section. You don't know what that is, but I never liked the first section of like, the I know what Midgar I, is. I, yeah. I have enough osmosis information about seven to, okay. to hang. At I'm, least. I'm just trying to, you know, and I know but that so, remake is pretty much just the Midgar section of seven. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and that part, um, I never really was into that even when I played the original. So when, when rebirth came out, I was like, oh man, I don't know. I'm not probably going to play it. Cause I, I personally, uh, I don't, oh God. Okay. I don't like, or I don't care for, oh God, please don't make me say this. Okay. I don't care. Oh, I can't. Say I'm not making you say anything, man. You, whatever you're comfortable with. <laughs> I don't really care for Kingdom Hearts. Oh, okay, never mind. I now I'm now we're, that, that's fine. I'm kidding. I love Kingdom Hearts, but you know, I, you know I've you. got no. Pro the the combat system doesn't really necessarily lock in with me. Oh boy. Um, the, the uh, I mean, I would argue. I, I would agree with you. Pro two's fine. Kingdom Hearts one felt like it was developed by someone who had never seen a video game before in terms of how it controls. It's <laughs> that, that game controls like absolute ass <laughs> <laughs> so anyway so so when i saw that the combat style was very similar like with a mix of that i was in the way that final fantasy 15 is i was like oh, okay and then um and then the side quests were really bland for me in the first in, in remake so i was like okay well that was enjoyable and I, I mean don't get me wrong when in the opening mission a huge smile on my face um the the bombing run is, is like God, the, the music is just amazing. And as I, as, as I kept, I said, you know what? I need to sit down and I just need to understand. What have I missed? What have I missed in the last 20 years that I don't remember from then? And I just, I just went back and I watched it. And dude, Final Fantasy VII is incredible. I would say it's, it's ultimately, it's a matter of just pure taste. Because I think it's, it's neighbors Six, I'm um, 14 hours through six. Six is, dude, six is like peak, right? Seven, peak. Eight, story-wise, it's it's very good as well. They kind of botch some things, but but and then nine and then ten. Like all the story stuff is so solid. It's really hard to like pick a favorite son or daughter. You know, like for me, it's like, well, I mean, you know, I love nine, but I, you know, anyway, Final Fantasy Seven. I mean, the way that they handle um the big bad in Final Fantasy Seven is truly impressive. And and there's a lot of twists and turns that you're just like, oh. And when I realized that as an adult, I was like, this is this is a game that I played as a child, but it's meant for adults. And that's, I really locked in on it. And um, it was such a good experience to revisit. And I literally, it was like, oh, 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 damn. I didn't know that. Cause as a kid, I, you know, you don't think about that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like, yeah, I've, I've, I've had that experience with a lot of movies that, you know, stuff you watch when you were mm. young, you know, I was a big, uh, like Jaws. Yeah. I, I was obsessed with Jaws. I like oh. warped my VHS copy of Jaws. And uh, a, about a year <laughs> ago, I rewatched it for the first time in probably 10 years. And like, there's so much like, there's just like, it is. it, it paints a beautiful pic portrait of like married life between um, Chief Brody and I, I can't remember the wife's uh, yeah, character's name. Remember, yeah. But also like camaraderie and brotherhood with these three assholes just stuck on a boat together. And things just that never resonated with me as a child. Cause I had absolutely no frame of reference for it. I'd never been married. I'd never been in love. Uh, I didn't, I didn't have lifelong, or actually, I guess they're not lifelong friends, but I'd never, you know, like, been thrust into a situation bond. with, with two other adult professionals that I had to learn to get along <laughs> with, but it, it's a really good portrait of like all of that. And it's very relatable yeah. and it's, it's brilliantly acted and shot. 
Um, so it sounds like you had a really similar experience, but with but with Final Fantasy VII, I've I, had that I, countless times over with media that I that I love that I saw as a kid. Yeah, and I mean, I think that that's a really beautiful thing when you can sort of like redigest something. Um, there's a really there's a really beautiful, you know, I think the the best books are the books that grow with you, you know, and I think like like um there's a I have a book called The Road Less Traveled by M. Scott Peck, and and it's, it's a flawed book, and he's a flawed man, and um. It, what I love about this book in particular is that he talks about like delayed gratification and you know what it means to like sort of be in the world and and you can read that when you're 20 or you can read it when you're 40 and and it will have a different meaning each time um and I think that I think that a lot of these stories are that way like the way that I responded to Chrono Trigger as an adult is probably I didn't play it as a kid but as a kid I probably would have responded to it super differently um you know and and I'm also my last thing I want to say on Final Fantasy VII is that like, I was good with the story as it was. And so like all the extra stuff, like, you know, who does he go? You know, I, I don't want to say anything about it, but um, I didn't, I don't necessarily need, I like a little bit of headcanon where I'm just like, oh, I wonder what happened there. I don't need to like have the answer, right? And I think like, I think it's really amazing that they have taken something that's so loved and handled it with such, I think real dignity, um, but it was okay. It was fine. It, it, it remains fine. The OG is very good. And if you only ever played the OG, you would not be missing out in my personal opinion. Some people want more than that. That's okay. It ain't final fantasy nine though. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> just, just teasing, just teasing final fantasy nine too. I mean, you know, it's funny cause people are like, it's boring or it's child, it's kiddish. And I guess I could see that, but then, I mean, man, I'm playing through it right now. And I'm like, yes, some of it's like very like childlike and there's a wonder to it. But I just, I love the like humanity in these stories. And that's what makes 14 so good too. It's the same reason. I mean, Final Fantasy, we're, we are so blessed to live in the same timeline as Final Fantasy, in my personal opinion. I love Final Fantasy with all my heart, even though I bitch about Final Fantasy 7. I love these games. <laughs> I love these games. Five is good too. Five is great. They're just charming. I don't know. I didn't really get it uh, until, uh, well, until 14, which to a lot of people, I, I think that's like a black sheep for, for longer term Final Fantasy sure. fans. Cause they're like, Oh, it's yeah. MMO. And they kind of treat it different, but clearly there's, there's themes that are, are you know, similar and resonate throughout the series. And 14 definitely possesses those themes. So, yeah, I mean, I, I played a decent chunk of ten when it was new. That was that was really mm. it, other than Kingdom Hearts, mm -hmm. in terms of of, of 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 a Final Fantasy experience before I started my fourteen journey. Um, and honestly, it was perfect. I just um, I, I I didn't grind enough, and I got stuck on a Seymour fight, and I got annoyed, and I just didn't pick it up again. But like <laughs> I, you know, just starting high school, <laughs> just starting dating, and. Oh, and yeah. having like that love story with like Yuna, like Kyle always calls it, oh, the kiss in the lake. Yeah, that kiss in the lake. I was the perfect age and having the perfect, that was exactly the type of fiction I that that I needed to resonate with me at the point in my life that I was at. Um, and now I'm now I'm dying to get back to it. It's it's on a big old wall of shame for games that I haven't beaten <laughs> that I'd like to. But yeah, it's uh, there's but something I'm, special about them, you know. There, especially ten. I mean, there's like a. I think that there again as an adult, I'm thinking about the one scene where she um the um the first scene that we see her when after Sin has destroyed the beach or the the beach town and I forget the. Well, anyway, um, and she does the summoning ritual or the 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 farewell ritual, whatever it is, like that. Uh, that cutscene, yeah. I mean, and like I kind of relate to. I'm not calling him Titus. I, I kind of relate to Titus. You <laughs> know what I mean? Like, I can't do it either. <laughs> it's like Mako. Who said at Square Enix that they could call Mako Mako? Mako. It's just saying Marco, but without the R. Um. Anyway, What's do you feel Mako? like? <laughs> Do you feel like, um, you know, yeah, you're right. It's, I think Final Fantasy 14 is really hard to digest for a lot of people, but my goodness, when you lock in, it is like the, and I bet you a lot of your viewers probably feel the same way as I do that Final Fantasy 14 scratches an itch, not only because it's good and it respects your time, but also because it is a playground of all these Final Fantasy references. And yeah. that's why I, it's like, how do you feel like having finished like this saga and obviously you have more to go but like having finished so much of it and 
like I know you love the I, I know that you said that you loved that Final Fantasy actually had an ending to like like the story arc. Yeah, but I'm like, I'm really thinking about I'm probably gonna make a video about ending an MMO. That'll probably be a video <laughs> at some point because it's to me uh bananas that they that they pulled it off. Um but and they pulled it off well. Yeah, but, you know? Yeah. Is that is that just your question? How do I feel about it ending or like? Yeah, like how do you feel about like the journey of like, like having not really touched other Final Fantasies? But... Um. Oh, in terms of them pulling in like references to like every no, Final Fantasy j- j- ever. Just, just like, just like the 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 massiveness that is Final. Like for me, Final Fantasy fourteen is home, and I wonder for you, like how it feels for you not having the connection to the other i guess you can't there's no frame of reference but well i i I feel like i think everyone's mileage is gonna is gonna differ but throughout most of it my take has been it's amazing how well it blends because yes it's a reference but yes they also usually go out of their way in the writing to tie it into the world that is final fantasy 14 and 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 make it fit um you have you have things like omega that Mm -hmm. When I, once I understood what it was, I was a little worried about what was to come because I'm like, oh, it's just, it's just a reference factory, but they still have a full arc story throughout Omega that ties directly into the lore that is specific to Final Fantasy 14. And, and to me, they, they do it well. Omega is a triumph for me because I, I don't know any of those references (laughs) and that is (laughs) one of my favorite pieces of content that I have done. But I'm also coming to you from like the guy that says, I like Kingdom Hearts. I, I started playing Kingdom Hearts because I'm a giant Disney nerd always have been always will be. And at some point, uh, cloud and squall were standing back to back while Sephiroth shows up. And I'm like, I know just enough about final fantasy to know that this is dope as hell. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That's oh, n- no one can deny that. Didn't yeah. play those games. Didn't have a PS one. Um, so I, I missed all of that, but yeah, for the most part, I think 14 does it great. And, and no one's going to, not everyone, isn't going to agree with me. The only part to me that felt like it stuck out, and I've said this before, is uh, without getting into over specifics, Tower of Zot uh, felt like mm. a really big fan service to me because I thought the monster models didn't match anything else that was going on in there, and it didn't. I, in my opinion, didn't match the established lore up until that point. All of the monsters that had been summoned by those towers were purple, but we're going uh, every color of the rainbow from Skittles in here because that's the color that those monsters look like in the games that they were from, and that really annoyed me. Because I was really reading into the tower lore. It's like, they're purple because they're lunar and everything's purple. Well, here they're going to be multicolored just because, I don't know, reference. Also, the Final <laughs> Fantasy 4 music I thought was mid. Um, I, I didn't actually like how much they referenced Final Fantasy 4. But I also, I mean, yeah. but for me too, like as a talking about fan service, like that's actually why I didn't like the, the I didn't play it because I just was like, mm, the Omega stuff in... Um, Never mind. Um, <laughs> Cause I, never mind. I forgot who I'm talking to. Uh, all good. All good. Uh, all, good. Um, all that to say, yeah. there's some fan service in something that I was like, ah, I don't know. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's fine. It's, but like, it's in the it, grand scheme in the, in the overall package of M Walker. It, it, it bothers me very little, but I get this question a lot. And I think people are, are curious because, that is something that probably makes me stand out from other people that have played Final Fantasy 14 is that I, I don't have that background in Final Fantasy. Yeah. I would and say so, so. Y- yeah, if it seems like I'm harping on it, it's not, th- it's not that I think it's actually that big of a, of an offender. It's just that it's, it's where it stands out to me. That's to me where I'm like, that's where I felt it. That and Ivalice, um, the Ivalice felt, <laughs> I really <laughs> like the not. setting of Ivalice <laughs> yeah. and I've started 12 and I've started tactics and I love what's going on in there. And one day yeah. I can't wait to actually play through them. But that that story is rough in Final Fantasy fourteen. That is. You a, mean you don't like doing math? I mean, uh, well, don't get me started on the math. That, that's a that's that's a mechanical gripe, and me being oh. and making it that that is a game mechanic that makes me feel unintelligent, and I don't like the way it makes me feel. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Like you just, I just want to. Un- I really should just start playing as a warrior, so I can just unga bunga. Because even <laughs> even trying to figure out, even as a gunbreaker who I love, like. You know what's funny is that when I was streaming Final Fantasy XIV, I was streaming as a white mage because the only reason I picked a healer was that I wanted to queue for dungeons uh, beforehand, like early, right? Instead of doing DPS, because my heart's always been like, well, I don't want to 
be involved. Yeah. Uh, but, but then I started streaming and then the comments started coming in that I was a terrible white mage. And I was like, oh, wait, apparently I don't know any of the rotations, despite the fact that I've been playing this for 500 hours and no one's ever said anything. But now that I'm on the internet, it seems that I don't know what I'm doing. So I decided to switch yeah. to samurai and I was very happy. But now I'm like, you know what? Fuck them. I want to play as a gunbreaker. <laughs> you know? There's also that thing, too, of like where people are like, don't worry about it too much until you're max level because you don't have all your abilities anyway. Uh, so there's also that part of it. And so now I'm, I've been playing for two and a half years, but I'm just now max level. And it's like, okay, time to get good. So I'm getting those comments as well. But I'm also like, uh, I'm like, well, have you cleared more than 10 extremes? I'm in eye level with no echo blind. Cause, <laughs> cause I have, so maybe my rotation isn't perfect, right. but clearly I can get, you know, I can figure it out. <laughs> so i like, yeah, you can take as much stock into that as you do or do not want to. So it's, it's a funny thing. Yeah. No, but I, yeah, long story short, I think 14 does a freaking killer job with uh, how it handles it's, it's as, a, it's, as a non. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I see it. It's almost like it's a, more of a celebration than, than fan service, but it like, cause yeah, like the, the amount of times I've stumbled over like new races and new characters that come up and everyone's like, it's this reference. I see it late and I'm like, Oh, I just like this. Cause it's, it's, it's fitting. This, I like this character. I like, you know, I like these bunny people. I didn't know what game they were from to me. I was like, I mean, Oh, they're, you're kind of fun. You're kind of quirky. Look, look at you. Look at you, you little bunny person. Well, Final Fantasy Dawn Trail looks like it's going to be a giant Final Fantasy Nine reference. So I'm, I'm and some ten. High. The the coastal towns have some ten references that I recognize in there. I'm like, ooh, oh, hey, great. oh, I need to rewatch the trailer. There's the, the there was some art that was shown at the very first fan fest of the. It's like one of the villagers, and they got a cool hat, and that they were that was a thing that was in ten. Um, mm. But um, yeah, Don, I'm I'm super hyped for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've, it, it's. We didn't time it this way on purpose, but it's almost perfect timing for us. And yeah, I grew up in Florida. Uh, bring bring on salt water and palm trees. Let's go. Let's <laughs> let's freaking go. I feel like this was made for me. So, yeah. Um, well, it's uh, yeah, yeah. It's time. It's it's time. Is it time? Is it time? Are you are you good? How are you doing on time? I'm fine. I'm asking you. Okay. We, we, I, I, I took some questions. So you want to oh, yeah. do, do a little Q and a, as long as stream yeah. holds out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's move into Q and a. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. You can be a part of the show by dropping a message in the Ask the Host channel in our Discord. Uh, you get access to it if you support us really in like any way, other than like if you threw a dollar at me on the street because I can't tie you into the Discord that way. But if you're supporting us on Patreon or on YouTube, uh, you're in there. So drop a question. Uh, Darkman wants to know what you think is the most underrated game soundtrack of all time. Oh, God. <laughs> What's the most underrated soundtrack of all time? How to scare a content creator. Ask them a question that ends with of oh, all time. Oh my God. I don't know. What do you, what, what, okay. I'm going to reword this. I'm going to, I'm going to put this in the language of content creators. So as not to scare you. When I say underrated game soundtrack, what pops into your head? Not of all time, just in general. Like what's the first thing that pops into your head? Oh my God. Brain rot. <laughs> oh, Ace Combat. Ace Combat. Okay, hey, there you go. To me, no one pays attention to Ace Combat because they think Pew Pew Plane Game. And I'm like, no, listen, listen. This is the best soundtrack I've ever heard. Ace Combat 7 is so freaking good because of the soundtrack. So Ace Combat for me. <laughs> although although there is true Atrian Odyssey, Xenogear. Well, Xenogear is not that underrated. Falcom in general is true. The Yeast series? Ooh. Okay. Yeast 8? Oof, okay. piece eight is good. And Octopath Traveler, yeah. Oh, that is a good one. I haven't gotten too deep into it, but I've played enough of it to to hear a good amount of music. Two especially is sublime. I don't remember what it sounds like. I remember in the PS2 era thinking and um, Zone of the Enders had a crazy good soundtrack. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Wow, there's more. There's so much more. Uh I can't remember off the top of my head. There's USA. so many. Yeah. There, you know what? There's too much music. Oh, 100%. I need, yeah. I'm a huge, a I'm a huge, we never talk about this. Like I, I, I usually around these parts, um, 
make fun of Sonic fans, but that's because I used to be a Sonic fan. I'm qualified to make jokes about being a Sonic fan. <laughs> I love the Sonic 2 soundtrack. I absolutely mm. adore the Sonic 2 soundtrack. That casino <laughs> level, that freaking oh. casino level sends me. Like it is, it's euphoric. <laughs> I got to play those on Sonic Mania. I really need to sit down and just like commit a couple hours to Sonic Mania. Yeah. I think that's the one that like has the old school levels. I can't remember. Yeah, I I haven't played a, I don't think I've played a modern Sonic game. I In college, I, I had the resident Sonic nerd friend and he had gotten the 360 Sonic and I walked in and I saw Sonic kissing a human girl and I'm like, Nope. I never need no, to play a Sonic game again. Not my again. Sonic. <laughs> I never need to play a Sonic game again. Um, yeah, so I've never... The, the last time I was excited about Sonic was when he was added to Super Smash Brothers. That's the last time I was excited about Sonic. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, that was Brawl, I believe. <laughs> um, Best soundtrack. Brawl. Oof. Gloria Anyway. <laughs> I love Brawl. Zeon asks if you could score voice work in any game other than what you've gotten into, what would you like to be in? Final Fantasy, easy. Final Fantasy, like yeah, I At the, yeah, I love I love my job and like I'm really excited for the future of my voiceover stuff. Like it's it's going well. It's it's been I did it for a long time before starting the YouTube channel. Um, I I'm constantly just just you know i'm just trying to keep growing and stuff but definitely a final fantasy i just my heart would just like be so uh, yeah i would um i would absolutely love to do voice acting I'd, uh, never have other than the dumb crap i come up with for the stream when i have to read for hours on end while playing through final <laughs> fantasy 14 it's so hard um, it's but hard. i'd love to do voice acting um obviously yeah i would like to do 14 um Oh goodness! Yeah. Other than that, I would love to be a hammy, cheesy, um, FMV street racer in a Need for Speed game. That would make me <laughs> deeply, deeply happy. Yeah. Hey, what's up, sucker? <laughs> Just drive past. <laughs> Give me a tank top and some camo shorts. Wow, you're looking great. <laughs> <laughs> nice ride, loser. <laughs> I could see it. <laughs> just play yourself <laughs> uh, suck it anyway anyway uh amp asks what's an aspect or skill of music that you feel the general public doesn't notice or talk about most of the time but you really wish they did active listening interesting what is what is people active listening people don't listen well i mean even conversation people don't listen but but active listening is like the one thing i would like hope to teach people like when you listen to something there's so much going on and you don't need to know all of it you don't need to tech you don't need to know technical terms you just need to like listen to it with both ears sometimes what, what happens to us when we listen to music we let it wash over us and the thing is is if you really start to listen to a piece over and over and over what ends up happening is that if especially if you listen with both ears you hear some new things each time and music it's like a it's like a layered textbook and inside of a song there's literally like 70 pages that you can that you can read it's just a question of like really tuning in to listening individual instruments isolating things like you can do anybody can do this i'm not special you can do it i just have experience that's it yeah, the uh, you do it um, uh, for for I, I would say um, more traditional or contemporary music like top forty type stuff. Have you ever seen Rick Beato's channel? Rick B, yeah, Rick Beato, yeah, he's or Beato, pretty, yeah, yeah. I never he's pretty. Say his he's name someone I aspire. He's someone I aspire to be. I I good. found him because um my my YouTube algorithm is nothing but car videos and pop punk video essays because I love pop. Oh. Punk. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he has the definitive Blink-182 video. He does a breakdown of What's My Age Again, where he actually, I think he got the masters from a buddy. And so he could isolate the tracks. And I never knew that there was like a straight up like, like church choir background singing portion with Mark Hoppus at the very end of that song. Um, just, and he isolates awesome. it and he plays it. And you're just like, this is the most angelic sounding thing that's like in a song that includes dick jokes I've ever heard. Like <laughs> it shouldn't work, but it does. Um, and I never picked that out. Not, yeah. Even like growing up, like I was being in garage bands, like the, yeah, I'd learned at least the very bare minimum how to pick out like a baseline from a song. 
Um, but I never picked up on that kind of shit. Like, you, you know, I struggle with this sometimes because I feel like I say the dumbest, most obvious stuff. And then people are like, oh, I didn't even think about that. And I'm always like, oh, but I think that that's just like my inherent like musical imposter syndrome that creeps in because a lot of times I feel like I say stuff and I just feel like none of it's really of value. And, um, and I, I find that that's the hardest thing about what I do is that like, I'll listen to something and it's just so obvious when something sounds happy. Right. And then it's my job to be like, okay, well, why does it sound happy? And, and I sometimes feel very dumb. Like I, I say that candidly, not out of sympathy, but also like just out of like, yeah, sometimes like I, I just don't feel like I have anything really substantially wonderful to say. And, um, and I struggled with that for a long time because I'm not like, I'm not like some of the others out there, like Alex Mukala or Dobby Bosk or, or, um, uncle Jesse or, or drum roll Tony who are like, or, do, or a string string player gamer. Like they are musicians that are looking at things from, especially the composers. I look at things from the emotion of them because that's the experience I have when I talked, when it came to opera, because my job was to take a foreign language and convert it so that people could understand it in the audience, regardless of whether they'd seen the opera one time or a thousand times or never seen an opera before. So when I approach it, I approach it from an emotional perspective, but if something sounds happy, I just assume that everybody understands that it sounds happy, but that's actually not, not the case. And I have to remind myself of that all the time when I'm talking. Um, I, I, yeah, I really feel that. Um, cause when, like when Kyle and I were making here's the storm content, um, we, we felt the need to constantly explain who we were explaining things to or for like, Oh, this is, this is for newer players, or this is for like aspiring pro, pro players because the level of knowledge is different between it. And right if you catch the wrong audience, you're going to get negative feedback. So I, I think it's really easy to, to feel the way you're feeling when you're putting content out there for public consumption. Um, Cause you're going to, you're going to get feedback on it. So there's a bring this kind of full circle with the top of the show when we were talking shop about, about making stuff. Um, yeah. And you hope that people like are, you know, appreciated anyway, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. 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 Abso, abso freaking lootly. And it's something I f haven't felt the need to worry about so much with the 14 audience. And I'm not sure why, but. Cause they're nice. Look at they them. See, you see, <laughs> I love the heroes of the storm community. I miss it dearly. I miss, I miss that game being more relevant. It's still fine. Still got a lively community, but like not at the level that it was at in like 2015. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's something like, I don't, I don't know. Like I, don't know. I think there's an inherent willingness to just celebrate the game when it comes to Final Fantasy 14, where there's just a larger portion of the community that's just kind of always down to have a good time, no matter no matter what what's going on. I, I mean, genuinely, it's just such a nice group of people. Like I was I was on there the other day, and someone was like, "Are you Marco Meatball?" And I was like, "Yeah." They're like, "Oh my god, I've never met a celebrity." And I was like, "Celebrity? I'm like in my like pajamas. <laughs> I'm like." I'm like <laughs> I am not a celebrity, um, you know, but like, it's amazing. It's amazing when, when they, when, when people are just so nice and they're, they like, yeah, I mean, I think people ultimately just like want to feel that their, that their game is being appreciated. Even if you can challenge them sometimes, which is important and healthy. I do think that there is a place where, you know, we, we just, just admire and, and, and be overjoyed by this amazing experience. I mean, that's why people like you guys so much, I think, you know? Likewise, <laughs> I hope. I hope. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, to to blow smoke your way, uh, <laughs> which is not blowing smoke, but yeah, like we got, we still get so many compliments about uh, your episode of of the podcast. Oh, really? Back when you came on, yeah, yeah. Oh. I, and and, and that, like to me, I think it comes from. I think it's the reason. Like I've. I've stayed in in touch afterwards. Like you're a very you're a very thoughtful person. To use uh, me, yeah. You're 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 legitimately thoughtful. Um, so I try to be to to talk a, to coming off of what you just said. Like if you're worried that you're not thoughtful enough, I, I don't think that comes comes across. Like I appreciate. I that. think if you're worried about being thoughtful, you're probably thoughtful enough. I mean, you you run into <laughs> issues. I mean, I've run into my issues, and 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 I I've tried my best to be as honest and genuine and and real as possible. But it's hard, and and you know I've had to put up barriers and walls that I didn't want to put up. But you know you, at a certain point you have to. But then also people misconstrue things, and I find that I find that I get misconstrued frequently enough where it's like. <sighs> You know, so, but I appreciate that so much. And I'm glad that people, 
um I'm glad that people appreciate that because you know it, it's a, it's a it's a fucked up world and like for this newsletter someone was like I would never pay for that and I was like bro who said anything about paying for a newsletter I know that the internet makes you pay for everything but why would you pay for a newsletter and they were like oh because of this and I was like no so you know there is and people like assume that I'm lying about certain things like guessing characters from the music it's like why would I why oh why yeah we I... we get that we get that all the time I... you know we went to Fan Fest, and yeah, there was there was a sub. Oh, a, a small... you know everything that happened yeah. at the end of Ben Walker. Yeah, which God once now that I've seen the end of Ben Walker, I'm like, how would anyone spoil this in in succinctly? You could start to spoil me. You'd be like, <laughs> and then you go to insert final zone here, and I'm like, okay, well, you need at least another 45 minutes to properly spoil this. Thing. That's yeah. how many layers there are to it. I'm gonna be out of earshot by the time you get to the good shit. Right. Like, Right. Yeah, I, I don't know how you, you do can't it. you can't really spoil it. I could tell you anything and you'd be like, Yep, I bet you that's what Maybe. happens. And Maybe. it'd be ridiculous enough that it could actually be the thing that happened. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, you know, like what are you what are you gonna do? Uh, yeah, the the the, the 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 maybe this isn't like a, a class worthy, but the when 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 I talk about kind of getting down from from mean comments with, with like Kyle and, and other folks like you, the thing I always I always tell myself is that like, if particularly if you feel like you're being misunderstood, I'm like the, it, it, it's probably a symptom of success. It means like that video or that stream or that piece of content, whatever it may be that you made, mm-hmm. it is reaching beyond your typical audience. Yeah. And that's usually what, yeah. That's when yeah, you run into that kind of stuff. It's, it's someone yeah. who uh, doesn't know what, what yeah. the type of content that you're trying to make and, and it's clashing with what they expected. Mm-hmm. The life um, experiences. Now, if the, you know, you get like 200 comments that are like, what the hell? Okay. Maybe there's some false advertising. Maybe you need to retool the thumbnail or the title, but, but like typically if it's, 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 I think it's why content creators tend to have these conversations because it really only takes one or two comments to kind of get lodged in your brain. And even if well, there are, and people don't know what constructive criticism even is anymore. I got a beautiful piece of criticism today that was, Hey, maybe don't um, give them the information about the song before you introduce it, because then they're going to come out, come away with preconceived notions before you start it. And I said, that is such a good piece yeah. of criticism rather than calling me, uh, uh, telling me rather than someone saying Marco doesn't handle criticism well because he's surrounded by yes men, which is not true. And second of all, I don't take criticism well. So yes, but, 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 um, you know, but like, that's not actual criticism that that's just being mean veiled with criticism. And when someone actually gives a constructive piece of feedback, usually its purpose is to help you grow and enhance you. Usually constructive criticism doesn't bring you down. It boosts you. And the only reason I know that is because for 10 years I dealt with shitty ass people who did not give constructive criticism. So I know exactly what constructive criticism looks like in a professional sense. So it's so interesting to be in this like online world where everyone can give you a piece of feedback and you have to just filter out what's actually beneficial and what's actually harmful. And it's a funny thing to live in this world where you have to navigate that. And I never thought that I would, I never anticipated that part of it at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a skill set you, you kind of have to build up and for some people it's natural. And for others, it's, <laughs> I have to talk about like, uh, like callousing or scarring. It's like, I, um, yeah, I was, yeah. uh, pretty thin skinned when I started this and just I've gotten better and better, but also it depends on the week you're having, you know, if you're having a that's tough week it, and you, then you see, a, on. yeah, you see a on. mean comment. It's just like, it, that's all it took. It's like, that's the last straw. Why do I even do this? But, but yeah, it's... I don't want to be perceived. <laughs> Yeah, ex- exactly. I actually, I ran into a situation which I won't talk about in great detail, but something happened and I got like a slew of emails from somebody and it made me extremely uncomfortable. And, and I was like, I turned to my fiance and I was like, God, I am going to delete the channel. I do not want to be perceived ever again. I didn't because that would be winning. Right. But like, but I, there was, it was like, I was like this close to being like, man, I'm throwing in the towel and I can't do this. This isn't the type of life I want to leave, but it's fine. We, we carry on. Yeah. <laughs> you got any more questions in there? I'm good. Uh, there, okay. There's a, a, quite a few more. Um, but yeah, I said I'd keep us to two hours. So oh, okay, um, no worries. Would you, Would you like one more that I feel like could go deep, but I am kind of curious your take take. Hell about yeah. It? Okay. All right. I'm gonna end on this one. Vernacular Ham said, and 
Admittedly, I'm, I'm truncating this a bit. They did say they're generalizing a bit here, but they said that game music has had a patina of disrepute about it. Uh, that is cheap, commercial, for the masses, yada, yada, yada. But what do, what do you think, Marco, uh, Vernacular Ham writes, as someone with like an actual classical musical background, uh, yeah. is it possible for artists to express something truly profound and new in music attached to games, or is it going to always forever be reduced uh, by being a component of a digital entertainment product. Yeah, rather, rather than a... Well, right. And um, this is an interesting discussion because I polled um, a lot of classical musicians in my sort of circle, in, in my sphere, um, from my past on Facebook. And um, it was interesting to see how most people... It's funny, I made a video about... Um, oh my God. The composer of Oppenheimer. I can't remember. J- Jurgensen. And he said, you know, thanks mom and dad for giving me piano lessons instead of video games, right? And this whole thing. And uh, and what's really funny is I was defending classical music or whatever, I, I can't remember. And someone was like, you're just using fancy words, but like it will never be as good as Bach or Beethoven or, or Mozart and, and or Brahms or whatever. And in fact, when my old music teacher uh, just came back on the channel and um, we're in, I'm in the process of having that edited. And he said the same thing. He was like, you know, this music is fine, but it's not Mahler. If you want real emotion, go listen to Mahler. And then I have my other friend, Jose, on, and he goes, what's the difference between art versus entertainment? And then he was like, why is none of this music bad? And I was like, that's an interesting perspective, because is it not bad? Because it has to be sold and marketed as a component of a greater picture. So if the music is bad, the game will underperform. And it, it's opened, and I just made a video about it today because I was like, what is art? What is entertainment? And why are those two things not the same? Why is there a difference between, I mean, is the is the Encyclopedia Eorzea book number three, is that entertainment or is it art? Because there's art in it. And what is art? And what what is... Also, know. classical composers, your Beethovens and your Bachs, they were also, at, at the time, commercial. It, it, it's just what commercialization was in their yeah. era is different than what commercialization looked like today. Right. But they were playing for massive audiences and auditoriums right. because that was the delivery device that existed. Right. And sure, Bach was was composing for the church, but that doesn't mean that, that that was that's art. But it's also like an entertainment for the sake of educating the general public, of the heathen, on 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 you know the the rel- religiosity and and mm-hmm. God and Jesus Christ and all this other stuff. So I mean, so to answer the question. I do think we're getting to a point where I, when I pulled this group of people, the vast majority of people said, why not both? Por que no los dos? I mean, like, there's no reason why you need to live in a world where classical music is looked up, looked up at as this like umbrella term for like high art and like what's true. Whereas video games are like sort of sequestered down over here on this bottom rung. It's hard because video game music, really good video game music, I think can stand on its own without context. And I get into arguments with my audience a lot because I don't necessarily always think it needs to. I do think that in context, everything's going to hit harder. But a good piece of video game music that can exist both within and out of context will and be accepted to an audience that maybe wouldn't, wouldn't perceive it as valuable. But I'm also a video game purist and I love video game music and I will always, always, always be on the biased side that video game music is more meaningful. The question is how you buck an industry that is, is, is essentially locked into this idea that the only thing that counts is what they know. So that's a long and complicated way of saying, I think it deserves more. And I'm actively doing my very best. Slowly but surely, I will be 50 you know, when thing, I, I think when I see real fundamental change, when I see concerts that are mixed and matched and, you know, a prime example is like Keiki Kobayashi, the composer of Ace Combat. There are a couple pieces of music from Ace Combat 7 in particular. And by who knows when I'm 50, they'll have Ace Combat 13 for all I know. And um, like Archange is, Archange is an amazing song and it is distinctly a oratorio piece that would have been composed for the church but is in a modern, modern, like, thing, a video game. If you put him on a program, no one's going to know who Keiki Kobayashi is. They're going to say, oh, this is a new composer that's just on the scene. 
they're not going to think, oh, it's from a video game? Fucking terrible. They're going to be like, who the fuck is Keiki Kobayashi? And that's how you spur. It's about like programming so that it like sounds like the music that people know, but then also it's not. The question is then how do you get video game audiences to go to something where they don't know because it's not advertised. But in my world, if I were to create a new symphony that did both, I wouldn't even tell people there's video game music on it. And then it would just be word of mouth over the course of 15 years. And yeah. then eventually it, it spreads. So that's the long and sh short of it. Yeah. And there's still, I mean, there's still debate about what it's already about. Like everything, like, you know, the dawn of TV, everyone's like, oh, just go read a book. And then, and people are still debating of games as in general, not even the, the different parts, oh. the different types of creations that make up the whole that is the game is art. Um, yeah, but it's, and it's all subjective. And, and the big yeah. problem there is that it's like some people feel that if if you are paying for something, then then it is then it is is not art. It is entertainment. But you also pay for art. So I'm not sure where the difference is. I mean, yeah, it's... but but theoretically, anytime you immediately start making money off of something, it no longer is art. It becomes entertainment. I mean, like yeah, it's a whole. Of, it's it, a whole. It it, it it all gets caught into the morass that is like popular culture and and maybe in this case instead of like saying popular culture is like popular respect because you know you have things like film and the oscars the academy awards that has this prestige to it um and th th i don't want to get too far down this rabbit hole because very quickly we can end up in a game awards uh, debate oh God. don't do it every year don't that comes out it. and everyone complains about how it's it, too many commercials and not enough time spent on the actual award. But the realist in me is like, well, you wouldn't get the views if you didn't have the announcements because people aren't going to just tune in and watch an award show. And how much is that is, uh, is the cause of we as society and what we're going to watch? How much of it is just the trends? Because we also just, we're experiencing the death of monoculture. I don't think the Oscars could start from nothing right now and get as, get the notoriety that it has today in today's playground we don't have monoculture we're not all watching the same television channel and, and and we're limited to like seven channels and this is the only damn thing that's on that night and i like famous people so i'm gonna watch it that doesn't exist we all we have we have so much choice about what we watch where we watch it when we watch it and how we watch it that yeah that, that i i see that as as part of it i think it's just it's an uphill mm -hmm. battle for games and game music to get the to reach that level of prestige because of just the yeah. paralysis of, of choice and options that we find ourselves with now. Well, and even talking about it is enough, you know what I mean? It's like, it just, just, just getting into a conversation about, about this is all one can ask for because we are not having these discussions and they need to be had and they at least need to be spinning in someone. I don't care if someone disagrees with me by all means disagree. Like, I love that. Please do. Yeah. If you respond respectfully, then we can enter into a really good discussion and maybe my mind will be changed about something, you know? And I think like that's, I think the nuance is so imperative to healthy discussion. And, and ultimately what we've learned is the algorithm follows the audience. YouTube is not a linear game. Data is a tool and obsess over delighting the viewer and there's no one way to do youtube and that my friend is what you've learned that's upside down <laughs> you have notes <laughs> i wrote them down i pinned this up because it's important i want to delight my audience i want to obsess over delighting the viewer that's why i added timestamps back in not because i necessarily care but because it's like if my job my job is to delight a person so that then they leave and they feel better because i also want to feel good you know anyway delight your audience obsess over delighting viewer and that's what you and kyle have done so exceptionally well and that's why there's 610 people watching right now well thank you and many you, more to come later well you have delighted me today um, <laughs> is is what you have done this is this has been i i love talking about this kind of stuff man i absolutely adore it it reminds me so much of my time in art school and even though i don't do traditional art nearly as much now as i as i used to i i i love i love talking about this kind of stuff um i like talking trade like whatever the trade is, whether it's art, whether it's music, whether it's uh, making YouTube videos, uh, which, hey, if some people think uh, video game music is disposable, boy, I feel that way about what I make, which is YouTube videos. Um, but I like making them. It makes me happy. So I'm going to keep doing it. Um, 
And uh, well, it, so we hope you'll join us, uh, me and Marco, and our two uh, YouTube channels for it. Um, and and speaking of which, as we as we exit, Marco, if folks are not already following you, where can they do so? Grinding Gears fans, you can follow me at YouTube slash Marco. No, at shit. Uh, YouTube dot com slash at. I don't think there's an at. No, there actually is. There actually is. Uh, well, actually, no, there's not. It's fine. I'm at Marco Meatball. Um, come check it out. And I stream every day, Tuesday, Thursday. No, it's not every day. Fuck, I'm really bad at this. Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday. That's the worst call to add. What's... It Tuesday, is... Thursday, Friday, I stream two to five every day on those days. <laughs> it is so human. It is delightful. Yes, go to youtube.com slash Marco Meatball. <laughs> And uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. You, you legitimately make phenomenal videos. Um, I appreciate and I, I'm, I was one of those people before I started talking to you. Like I didn't think about video game music outside of the, the few tracks that have stuck with me, but I never thought of it as something that you could go this deep into. Um, and you, yeah. you have clearly proven that your videos are have you been watching my videos yet, Garrett? Because you have a lot to catch up on now. I do so have a lot I'm to not, catch up on, but now, the, now the paralysis is, what <laughs> ones do I save to watch as reacts content? That's the new paralysis. <laughs> Previous paralysis was, are there spoilers? Now it's, do I just rip this because I want to watch it, or do I save it? <laughs> do I save it to watch publicly? All right, please do, by all means. <laughs> I'll never uh, say no to that. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate the blessing on that because I feel... I feel Next time you come on, we'll talk about how I feel weird about React content just in general. Um, but but me, it's, me too. it's a good time. It's a good time. Um, so go follow Marco. Uh, follow. Go to Twitter right now. Go to at Kyle Ferguson. Tweet something nice at Kyle. Uh, tweet him congratulations because I have yeah. gone blue in the face trying to ferry congratulations from stream chat to him because uh, so many of you are so kind and, and come over here to bring congratulations. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Garrett Art. We have a joint account at Garrett and Kyle. So go follow us there. And um, got to thank our wonderful patrons who support us on Patreon at supportourbromance.com. That is a link that will take you directly to the Patreon for Kyle and myself. If you like the content we make and you want to support us, go check it out. And to our most recent patrons, I want to thank Snooze It, Adam T, Vicky G, Connie T, Christopher C, and Pandora. And of course, our legendary level backers that we thank every podcast. And you get some credits at the end of our videos. So huge thanks to Sean B, Mike R, Stephen J, Das, Cheesy Bob, Chris K, Lost Mythics, Wayra E, Zervon, Compsi Jedi, Darkman, Pothy P, Bloodsy Vaughn, Snuggle Gore, Zack Sock, Avane, Shinny Geo, Nicholas C, Coral, Jerry T, Sean and Jen, Janet Y, and Vernacular Ham. Welcome to the legendary bracket there, Ham. Thanks for the uh, support. And uh, we use Doghouse Systems gaming PCs. Go to DoghouseSystems.com. I'm looking at mine like anyone can see it, but it's right here. I can touch it. Use the code BROMANCE. You'll get yourself a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD for your trouble. That's DoghouseSystems.com. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Marco, again for joining me. I'll be back tomorrow if you're watching live on stream. Otherwise, I'll be back next week with a yet-to-be-disclosed guest. But until then, GG, everybody. Expertly done. Cleavage, yes, yes, I'm going to join the cleavage of Clives. Uh, all right, that is the end of the formal show. Welcome to the after show, Marco. We are still live. Oh, damn. Okay, I'm here. I always like to oh, warn people, um, <laughs> but um, I can also I can also close out this stream without you. I do not feel the need to stick around. Also, OBS might just close it out for us, everybody. You know, I don't know what's we going on. We should be on. so lucky. Um, but I'm, I'm glad we made it to a formal end of the show without whatever's going. There's apparently an update that I do not have. I bet that was probably the culprit. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Is the guest Mr. Yoshi P. I would not be able to contain my excitement if Yoshi P. was the guest next week. No, it is not Yoshi P. It is not Yoshi P. Um, I have been poking friends about the media tour, because I don't know how it works, and no one that I'm pretty sure would have media tour invites has heard shit about the media tour. So there's a media tour. I never invited being invited to any of that shit. I guess oh, I'd I, like to be. I guess it's what? a thing that happens before an expansion because they're. I'm, uh, uh, it's always the usual suspects. I know. I watch a. I think I watched Zeppelas and Asmongold's interviews from the last one for Endwalker. That's mm. that's my only 
level of education on its on an existing is is that so god if i could like chat to soaking i would shit my pants yeah yeah so i I don't know i don't know i mean hopefully uh yeah i don't know if you're supposed to like i don't know how you're supposed to leverage that 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 would be interesting yeah i have no idea i have no idea um uh, i i only know how blizzard does things which is like makes more sense to me i've never heard a word from anyone from square uh officially the the closest thing to an official word from square i've ever gotten was uh a square employee at FanFest being like oh i love your channel and me going holy shit thank you so much and that was it that was it that was all it was (laughs) uh can i'll I'll take care of something i'll i'll I'll, i got you oh well thank you either way um you know yeah yeah no no i got you it'll be all right but i appreciate it i appreciate it Um, so what do you do in the post show well, usually I catch up on any supers that came through, which we oh. uh, we had a few. Um, Vivian said, uh, I saw Black Swan on the thumbnail, so I had to come. Love you both. Thank you, Vivian. We love you too. Um, Black Swan's pretty cool too. I just really I knew cool. I knew we were going to talk about Honkai, so uh, I'm going to be honest. I grabbed the first thing I saw on Google Images. I have no idea who that character is. Um, but She's I, pretty cool. I was curious. I was curious about your... I was curious about your your t- your takes on it, so I figured I'd include some art from it. Uh, one gunslinger super chatted. Good day, both of you. Been watching GG for ages, and they have uh, talk about you a bit, but never put the name together with the Warframe music videos I've seen till your face was on a few weeks ago. Well, there you go. Natural, uh, natural finding, natural crossover with uh, GG regulars, Marco. The algorithm Yay. is doing its work. That is doing its work. Hell the algorithm is yes. very smart. Except when, a, uh, except when a video underperforms, then I blame the algorithm. <laughs> As one should. <laughs> uh, and then Invictus Red, thanks for the super, said, if I wanted to build a meta deck in Yu-Gi-Oh, I knew it would cost me $300 in 2004, and I could win tournaments, and I made it back before Power Creep made it obsolete. 300 in 2024 is like six rolls these days. This is this must have come in back when we were talking about gotcha mechanics. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, yes, Invictus, that is exactly kind of what I'm, what I'm talking when I was doing Hearthstone content, like it was cyclical. Like every few months, the new, the new freaking like cart of this is expensive and exploitative people would, would show up. And I'm just like, we just, we just talked about this. Um, is it expensive? Yes. Is it more affordable than magic the gathering? Also? Yes. <laughs> like, um, so I don't that like, should do, do I, do I, my, my show is not about uh, tearing down the bedrock of the business that is trading card games. That is not <laughs> what the show is about. Um, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I'm also kind of tired of this conversation. Yeah, that's... What are you going to do? I mean, it's like, okay, you know, yeah. at a certain point. I like cars. What am I going to do? Complain about the cost of a Lamborghini? No, I'm just not going to not going to buy a Lamborghini because I can't. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I, I can't right. do it. That's why we have a, a Ford and a Toyota in the garage, because that's what I can afford. Um, I love my Honda. I yeah, Honda's great. That. that was my first car was a Honda. I have a mm, very, I have a soft, a real big soft spot. If if we decided to have a kid, I'd probably buy a Honda. That'd probably, I'd probably be like, okay, I need a four-door Make car, that. and I, I need to not hate driving it. I'm going to go buy, <laughs> I'd probably buy a Honda Civic Type R, because you still got a, a shit ton of space in the back. But it is, How tall are you, though? Uh, I'm 6'1". Oh man, yeah, but so I have a I have a, a Civic hatchback, and I literally have to like, yeah, like crawl out of that thing. My wife <laughs> has a two door tiny Toyota that uh, I fit when I'm in it. It's perfect. Getting in it is a little bit of a struggle, <laughs> but I'm used to it. Um, my yeah. friends have a Honda hatchback, and compared to my wife's car, it's that thing. I could like, I could jump into a Honda. Civic oh really? By okay. All right. Yeah. All right then. Yeah. I like it. I like the, I like the tight fit. We call it a we call it a cockpit mode. Like it feels like a fighter jet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I, I I I like that quite a bit. But um, yeah. But thanks, Invictus Red. And I, I see you also re upped your your uh, membership during that. Much appreciated. But yeah, yeah, man. Um, thank you so much for coming by. Uh, this is of course an absolute damn delight. Even though we've we've had similar conversations off air, but it was nice to to have one on. So. Oh no, dude! It was my pleasure, and thanks to everybody for hanging out and and listening to us, and not totally um, what's it called? Uh, not flaming me for uh, for my hot takes on. They're, uh, they're used. Were to they me. that hot though? I don't they're, know that they were that hot. 
they were they, like just normal takes. They've they're used to me, or like um, you know, I I got a little I got a little spicy about Final Fantasy IV during the beginning of N Walker. Um, oh. I believe one of my new infamous quotes was, um, I know it was going to be hard to top Shadowbringers music, but to just not make new music was a choice. I believe that's my <laughs> now infamous quote about. Oh yeah, with all the Final Fantasy IV stuff. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's fine. Kyle's absolutely right. Zot has aged like a fine wine. We have gotten that dungeon so many times since, and that is a such a fun dungeon to run. Like it's oh, it's God. fun to play, even if I have lore nerd yeah. issues with it. Um, yeah, it is a. When are a, you starting the next stuff? Um, Kyle's gone for two weeks, and then this is unofficial because we haven't put a date to it. But uh, we'll probably just rip pan pandemonium at least the first wing of pandemonium as soon as we both can we're both really yeah. excited to continue pandemonium is um, great we wanted a bit of a breather to get the end walker video out but at this point we're like maybe we just start pandemonium while we're working on our final end walker video and we just we just go because we're just ex we just want to play it like what really weirdly lit a fire in us was realizing we still can't do the fucking uh roulette <laughs> Even though we beat 6.0, it's like you can't do the roulette until you've done the other patch dungeons. We're like, well, fuck! Like we would just we want to enjoy the end game before Dawn Trail gets here, so yeah, yeah. we don't yeah. want to rush it. You know, we still want to do the patches. You know, bite size like we've been doing, but we are also we're just we just want to enjoy the game too. There's a little bit of that going yeah. on. So, oh, one million percent. If you need me for Pandemonium, especially for the first four, just let me know. I did those quite. Dude, a bit you are welcome about. anytime. I would love to. <laughs> I would love to at some point coordinate. I'd my dream would be to coordinate an extreme with like all our buddies. Oh that God. Also, <laughs> that also do 14 content. I would like, it's tough. Cause like half of our, our now our YouTube friends and our Twitch friends are in Europe. So I know they're working oh. on tech, but the times difference is also a massive pain, but I would, yeah. God damn. I'd love, I'd love to get you and Jesse and Nendy and okay. Mage and preach and just like everybody dog pile. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so much fun. I would I would absolutely learn an extreme for that. That would be very fun. Yeah. That, uh, that would be very fun. That's like my dream stream content. Like we it was it was just accidentally it was wonderful that we got Jesse and Joe Cat in the same dungeon and Yeah, I saw that during N Walker. But um I'd love to actually coordinate it and like kind of advertise like uh, hey, we're bringing everybody come watch tonight cuz and, and I also I just want to I want a warning at the front. But you're like warning we will all be on comms. <laughs> it will be a shit show. Uh, vocally. Like, Warning, this will be terrible. <laughs> chat interaction will be rough, but I just think it'd be hilarious to just have open comms, <laughs> like, like eight stack content creators and just go. Like, I just think that'd be so amusing. Are you guys going to stream um, Dawn Trail at the same time? Cause this will be the first time that you're caught up. So like, what will that be like? A lot of it's going to come down to if we, our current in time because we, we did plot it out and it's going to be close if we're going to do uh, a patch and make a video per patch it's going to be close but we're pretty sure we can make it um mm -hmm. every time i say that there's immediately someone's like you're not going to make it i'm like Wh whatever if we do we do if we don't we don't but we're our, our light goal is to make it sure um so yeah, yeah I, I think this is i don't think we've talked about any of this publicly but whatever if you're oh sorry no no it's fine if, if folks are still here like I'd like to reward you with like some kernels that I don't, I haven't made public yet. Cause like now we're, we're just, we're just vibing now. So, um, yeah, I, we don't know. It's not set in stone, but our, our current thought is that, you know, it, it releases what on a Tuesday, right? For everybody. Cause we're not going to take advantage of the early access. There's the, people are so worried about spoilers and rightfully so. Um, yeah. so like, I'm not going to have fun thinking about how many people are worried about spoilers. So, but we think we might do like, because usually there's two zones and you get to pick one. We're thinking we might pick one starter zone that Thursday after launch and just just do it. Like if we're current, we don't see any reason to really wait because we take so long between zones when we make videos that That's okay, the thing. <clears throat> yeah, that launch week, like yeah, maybe it's a little soon for some people, but once we rip that first zone and we start our cycle of making videos, people will have plenty of time to get ahead of us. Plus the nice thing about YouTube is that you make a video and then even if it doesn't do well the first couple of days, you know, four, four days later, it, it turns around there. Sometimes 
sometimes the, you know you just have to let the ranking system sort of take care of itself and it's like it's like if you drop a video at like midnight that might not be ideal for your target audience but like i had a video that i dropped it at 8 a.m and it was an 8 out of 10 and i was like oh wait what this is normally like the lot of the two video game music challenges i did here were like a two and a three out of ten yeah but then but then it's fine it, it picked up and now it's like a five out of 10 and that's exactly like middle of the road. That's like where it should be. Not everything can be a one out of 10. Sometimes you just want to be consistent and do the thing. Yeah. Anyway, I'll let you go. I got, I just bought a PS Vita, so I got to go pick some, some games. Oh shit. Um, oh man. Oh, I'm in my PSP handheld so era much. right now. I'm in my, my handheld era. So much. That's what yeah. I want to do when I play tactics. I want to get a, I want to get a, a PSP, whatever version that tactics on it. That's how yeah, I want to play tactics. That. Really? Is that on, that. that's on the PSP? I think it was on the V. I think it was on the Vita. I don't. Ooh. I don't know. My P- I had an, a launch PSP, and I never got another one. So I don't. I don't know what came after that. But um. Yeah, it's it's yeah. the Vita is still holding up. In I know. I know there one of the PSPs got a got a a, a, a tactics release. So. Word. Thank you for telling me. That's we'll how I want to play that. that. But yeah. But yeah. So to chat to, for the Dawn Trail plans, none of this is set in stone. This is this is kind of like a gut check. We were like, well, how are we feeling? And we're like, we're pretty sure when we get there, we're kind of like we to us, we're just gonna do it if it feels like it's fun and it's not completely leaving leaving our community out in the cold. That's kind of the for us. That's what we think is the Goldilocks zone. You know, to tie it back into the podcast. You know, are we excited about it? Okay, then it probably it probably feels it's probably right. You know, because we get sympathy pains. We don't like doing stuff where folks are like, oh, damn it. You know, we don't we don't want to hear that either. So we don't want to make you feel bad. So none of this is gospel. We'll see how it shakes out. That's my disclaimer. I'll see you tomorrow for the Final Fantasy 16 crossover event, everybody. I'm going to go join the cleavage of Clives. And uh, Marco's going to go play with his PS Vita. GG, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming by. See ya.